raise that roof. I hope everybody's doing okay. <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> I'll play. I'll play. Uh, I'll play one that's uh, that's a lot. That's a lot lower lower energy than that one. Uh, this is a song. This is this is a cover song. I don't usually do cover songs. This is one that I really like. It's by by a man named Hank Williams, and I'm, I'm doing it. For, I'm doing it. I'm doing it for Eric. Who played Straight onto oblivion, into a void, as pure as they come. 
I always wanted to die young. I always wanted to die young. Now I feel younger every day. I throw my dad younger than I am. Yeah. Oh. 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 I woke up this morning and I wasn't in prison, but I can't promise that I'm far from it. I feel like a man for a cigarette, but my friends told you when he's homicide. The song goes down to all I want to be locked down. Come on back now, we need him around. That judge doesn't know what he's done. The judges never know the way they do. How could they? should make uh oh it still hurts pulling my uh, top lip down like that yeah i shaved oh i also got a workout in um yeah i probably should it's 420 why not oh jesus christ um uh, stare into the light um I said to wrap a bunch of shit. All right. Where's the charger? Um, there There's the charger. Um, thank you, Deirdre. All right, let's, let's make this happen. Oh, for fuck's sake. Nobody gives a shit about this shit. Does that, does that ever work? Ah, uh, fuck off. I ain't no hypno slut. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I've been sleeping, I've been eating, I've been drinking, frankly. Uh, I've just been, dude, I just had a shake. Um, Cat, cat, that's not whether hypnosis works or not. That's just you being a control freak. And the wrong format to try that is actually stage hypnosis. It's the wrong, it's the wrong format. Um, stage hypnosis is like a 98% fail rate. It's, it's literally, that's, that's why they have assistants that pick people. That's why they pull people off stage very quickly and they sort it down to like two or three people, maybe even one. Yeah. It's, it's literally, you're, you're very quickly parsed out the susceptible ones from the non-susceptible ones, and you're a control freak anyway, so. Uh, oh, congrats, Alex. Um, yeah, 
that's the wrong for, uh, format to try that in. The correct format would be with somebody you trust, probably somebody like me, um, and um, in a like hypnotherapist setting, uh, alone in a dark room where you're actually prepared to like you know relax and let go a little bit. Um, then we can figure out if it can work. But I mean, ultimately, it's not a matter of whether or everybody's susceptible to hypnosis because hypnosis is a natural state. It's just a matter of whether you'll let somebody guide you or not. That's it. That's it. It's it's the equivalent of um, it's the equivalent of will you let somebody else drive? That's it. Do you have to be in the driver's seat all the time? Are you are you the one who has to drive or can you be a passenger? It's all it amounts to. Uh, <laughs> caboose. Um, there are ways to, you know, aid. But uh, let's 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 do a little of this. Hang on. Perfectly legal. Tobacco. <laughs> Must shoot Lincoln. Uh, Darren Brown proved that you can you can uh, force that, that. That it's it's an old wives' tale about like oh you can't make somebody violate their morals. Of course you can. <coughs> Darren Darren Brown just proved that nine ways to Sunday. You can get them to rob shit and get them to assassinate someone. It's not a big deal. You just have to find the right person. Uh, <laughs> um, a for twos. All right. Oh, fucking A. I don't know if there's anything I want to talk about. Um, oh, cold water. See, exactly. Oh, let's see. Oh, man. Let's refresh something here. I'm still down a few pounds. Jesus Christ. That's, that, that's killing me. The loss of the gains and the fucking... Oh, the, I'm even more cut than I was. Um, my abs are fucking ridiculous looking now. Oh, itch, itch on the bottom of the heel. Uh, yeah, no, it just it fucking dude. When can I rename that shit? I I fucked up when I hit start and hadn't renamed the stream. And fucking there we go. Let's see if I can edit this shit. Edit. Um, there we go. Done. Yeah, don't worry about it. There was there was no there was no Popo's Bizarre Adventures last night. Um, it just yeah, I, I I hadn't changed the stream title from the last time we did it, and fucking I just hit start and sh fucking that. Um, what do you mean you can't just say that and not show the class? I have no idea what you're talking about, cat. Um, oh, fucking the Darren Brown stuff? Um, two different specials. Um, oh, show abs. No, um, you've seen them before. I'm not showing the class. Um, hey, Joe. So, yeah, that is what it is. Oh, I, I, um, I fucking, um, I did an old man, like, after last night's stream. I have no idea. I have no idea. My, my shoulder just, like, hurt. Like, it's just out of nowhere. I'm just like, what the fuck happened? I didn't lift anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't feel anything, like, on a on a movement or a tweak of some sort. I just, I was like, what what the fuck? What the fuck happened? Like, it just straight up old man. Like, it just started hurting last night. I was like, I you know, best I can guess, some weird fibromyalgia, fucking salt, small fiber neuropathy related bullshit that I deal with. I don't fucking know. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, I was like, holy shit, man. Um, but, you know, I don't know. Um, yeah, dude, it's just because I'm old. Straight up. Um, you would have the same thing with your knee? Yeah. Literally, I slept wrong and I'm hurt now, says Aspen. Yeah, welcome to, be, welcome to being fucking old. Um, 
Oh, man. The right side is still recovering. Uh, it's 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 not there yet. The left side is pretty well heal. It's it's still a little fucking scabby right up in there. But yeah, the right side it, it was the right side was worse and came on hardest and first, and then the left side fucking oh my god. So it's left side is receding, then the right side will recede. But oh man, I got a workout in. Uh so that was that was nice. Ah. Uh, he just heard you were talking shit about him, so he hit you with a bo with bone pain. Uh, fucking yeah. So, oh fucking, I, I I don't know what I'm gonna have to do after recovering from this one. I'm just gonna have to, dude. I'm gonna have to fucking kick my own ass. Like if like I don't already work out hard enough. Um, I think I'm gonna have to skip a lot of the like heart rate stuff. Um. I'm going to have to skip a lot of the, like, elevated heart rate stuff and just go straight for muscle building, I think. I'm just going to have to fucking hit weights, hit weights hard as best I can. I'll tape and wrap and tape and wrap. Um, oh, Jesus. Joe. <sighs> I, I, dude, I, Kat, I'm already having to, like, chug 750, 800 calorie shakes just to, like, catch up. So I'm gonna have to drink. I'm gonna have to drink like three of those a day, Ju uh, uh, and a meal, like and a big ass fucking meal, just to. Oh God, just I just had one, I just had one. 750 fucking uh, calories, and a single drink, in one of these, and it all gets downed in one, boys and girls, and NB pals or whatever the fuck y'all want to be. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I'm just. Just tell me what the fuck I'm supposed to say. I'll say it. I don't. I don't. I don't care. There's not enough time in my day to give a shit. My my acceptance of others is based not upon some broad-minded, open-minded philosophy. It's based solely on laziness. <laughs> fucking people out there. Fuck it. Ah, these new that I don't like this new thing. I'm like, dude, fighting it is way too much work. What are you doing? We're Americans. We're lazy. Just accept it. <laughs> that's that's the thing about all of the like gender abolition stuff that I just don't get. Like, it's actually less work to not fight it. So I don't understand why Americans don't do that. It's just we're fundamentally a lazy people. I don't, I don't get that. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, cat, cat's not a bong smoker. Whether cat doesn't really use a bong. Uh, isn't one equal to a meal anyway? I mean, it's equal to most people's meals, but three of them a day isn't going to get me to where I need to go. So three of them a day is just groundwork. I, I was doing two, but now I need to do three probably to catch up. Um, you want to see a bariatric toilet? I know that's a weird question, but I saw one. Um, well, and there's a foot for scale. I'll give you the first. All right. So here's a bariatric toilet. <clears throat> bariatric? B a uh, b a r. I A T R I C bariatric. Um, wait, am I not? There we go. Um, okay. So here's a foot. So you can sort of. Okay, so this toilet holds 900 pounds. It this toilet holds 900 pounds. This toilet holds 900 pounds. It's got a four inch outflow rather than a three inch outflow. Yes, that's what this toilet is about. The toilet, this toilet goes into bariatric centers. Um, so yeah, it, it um, yeah, it's got a, it's got a one, four inch outflow rather than a three inch outflow. And those that know your your maths, that's a huge increase in volume actually. And I, you know, just I find it interesting. It's a nine hundred pound toilet right there. 
Where can you buy one? Special dude, dude, fucking specialty medical equipment. Fucking yeah. Dude, apparently, um, one guy was commenting, he said, I'm a plumber, I've seen one installed. It's not just bolted to the wall. He said there's metal runners in behind it. He said basically this thing is like st this thing is directly attached to m uh, metal runners behind the wall that are like anchored in place. It, it it's a piece of kit. It's like a legit piece of kit. Yeah, I I I was like holy fuck, man. <laughs> we fat. <laughs> we fat fat <laughs> um that's a big boy toilet yeah yeah i i i man we fat <laughs> oh and uh y'all want to see the next evolution in um we're starting to like level up our sandwiches apparently what shape what shape are your sandwiches Threefold symmetry sandwich is only the first step on humanity's journey to the spherical sandwich and the infinitely tessellated hexagon tortilla. Finally, some progress. <laughs> hey, Cohen, thanks for the follow. Um, oh, I need to check, um, I keep need, needing to check that Fox Nation shit. Um, because I am not going to miss, we're, we're subscribed for a month. It costs the channel 99 cents. Um, I want to see this Tucker Carlson documentary as soon as it airs. I want to see the end of men by Tucker Carlson. I want to see this, like everybody's saying it's gay as fuck. It's like, it's gayer than like three dudes blowing nine dudes. All right. It's, it's like super, super fucking gay. Lots of sweaty shirtless men doing sweaty shirtless men things. Right. Also naked dude, just, um, sunning his balls because apparently tanning your balls like in increases like testosterone production. But you know that, that's in it. There's just like a fucking naked dude standing there with like a red light on his fucking nuts or some shit at one point in the documentary. Documentary, Fucking so it's super fucking gay apparently and I am I am here for it. I am here for it. So yeah. Yeah, I can boost that thing. Deep fried balls. Um, yeah, that thing. Um, so yeah, it fucking, it's on Fox Nation which is apparently where Fox News hides all their like truly insane shit. Did you know Fox News has like a different tier of truly insane shit? And then they, they, they put it there behind like a subscription wall. It's called Fox Nation and it costs you like five bucks a month. And that's where the crazy, crazy happens. Um, and so yeah, we're fucking, we're subscribed. Um, and when it, when it fucking, it's supposed, to, I don't know when it premieres, dude, I, I, I signed up. I was like, dude, I, you know, I was hoping it was out. It's not fucking released yet. They're just promoing it. So it better get released in the next month. If it gets released in the next month, then, you know, we may have a viewing party. Super fucking gay though. Apparently super gay. Uh, Deirdre, nobody's got time for science or fucking math or medicine. Fucking, you know, what the fuck? It? Yeah, and yeah, Zippy, shh, shh, shh. Just let it happen. <laughs> just fucking, 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 fucking. No, 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 no. No, it improves testicular function. Fuck up. It totally improves testicular function. Yep. <laughs> what are my political views? I'm an anarchist. Hi, my name's Kai. Uh, it's 420. It's the night show. Um, so the vibe is very much chill. The vibe is very much have some fun. Grab a drink. Grab a smoke. Enjoy yourself. If we need to show the beginning again, we'll show the beginning again. But I'm technically, if you really want a technical, I'm a post-left, post-anarchist. Um, so if that means anything to you, congratulations. If it doesn't, then that's neither here nor there. At the end of the day... I'm not a big fan of the state, not a big fan of hierarchies, not a big fan of authoritarianism, big fan of distribu distributed topologies, big fan of the people taking care of themselves, especially in times of crisis, and I'm a big fan of dual power structures. Welcome. Uh, sup, Carpe? Oh, it is. Just, just over. 
we were just talking about um, uh, we were just talking about the Tucker Carlson uh, end of men documentary that I'm waiting on. Uh, I've got a, f- a Fox Nation subscription set up for the channel, so like when the end of men documentary comes out, Carpe, we're gonna we're gonna give it a watch. Not you know not on stream, um, but yeah, because you know apparently lots of sweaty shirtless men, lots of sweaty shirtless men doing sweaty shirtless man things. Um, also naked men tanning their balls. I uh, don't ask me, man. Don't ask me. Um, but yeah, yeah. The, the Tucker Carlson homoerotic mantisy. Yes, dude. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. It's gonna be great. Are you kidding me? It'd be amazing. Ooh, do a reaction stream. Uh, do they, no, no. Do they use like a ball tanning mirror? No, they use, um, they actually use like a red light. Uh, like I don't know some red light therapy light thing that apparently does nothing anyway yeah like it, it's it's red light th- red uh, red LED light therapy which apparently does jack sh- jack all to start with but that's what it is it's literally a, f- a fucking box with a bunch of red LEDs but the dude's outside like he's outside fucking backed by the fucking sun and shit it's fucking it's god damn it Tucker Carlson's stupid <sighs> it, yeah, no, no, it 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 a hundred percent works. It a hundred percent works. In fact, what I've heard is, t- it, it, if you want to take it up a notch, you need to get direct sunlight because um, t- direct sunlight. You really need to superheat the balls. Heat is energy. This is just science, right? Heat is energy, and the fact of the matter is, is d- declining testosterone and sperm production in the West in in the developed nations is is because of a lack of energy. It's because of lazy balls. So what you need to do is you need to get more energy into those tests. Testicles and energy. Everybody knows heat is just energy. So what you really need to do is superheat those balls, and then your testosterone and sperm production just goes through the roof. Spread it around with your conservative friends. Totally how it works. Um. Damn it! Not another lazy ball. Oh. Feel the sizzle. Uh, this is some just Robert Blaze up. I I do carpe. Um. Fucking yeah. Uh. uh bit of bow. Just just checking. Oh wow, interesting. Duly noted. Cupcake. Thank you. Rocky Mountain oysters. Anyone. Um, you know, I heard uranium hung near the balls actually makes you a super chat. Um, uh, radium, radium's really good for that. Radium supercharges the testicles. Yeah. Jesus Christ, these people are fucking stupid as shit. Um, all right. Oh, um, Chalk this one up for hilariousness. China has just officially told Sweden that they should respect the religious beliefs of Muslims. So you know. Not kidding you. Just just so so you know. Um fucking uh the was it China's foreign spokesperson of China's foreign ministry. Um Freedom of speech cannot be a reason to incite racial, cultural discrimination and tear society apart. We hope Sweden can earnestly respect the religious beliefs of, my, of minority groups, including Muslims. This is this is a spokesperson for China. I don't know how they do it without laughing. I don't know how they do it without laughing. Honestly. Like, even our people, like press secretaries and shit like that. How do you get up there and not crack a smile? Like, dude, this is fucking, fucking, you're fucking China. You're fucking China. You know, you really need to respect, you really need to respect the rights and, uh, you know, the culture of minority groups such as Muslims. And scene, right? Like, what the fuck, man? I, 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 you know, um, 
Don't know. I don't know. But it, it is, it always strikes me as that sort of like, how on earth do you maintain a, a straight face when you're delivering that line, especially in front of a camera and like a crew of people? Uh... What did Aspen say? Did Sweden just say Uyghur? Uh, I, I'm not aware of any retorts or rebuttals on the part of the Swedish ministry. Um, Drew Carpack. Um, well, okay, so... Some some group in Sweden did a Quran burning. Okay? That's what happened. Some some group in Sweden. It's not like the state of Sweden fucking did it. But some some group in um in Sweden did a Quran burning. It kicked off a bunch of shit. Bunch of fucking riots. Um, you know, Muslim protesters. Look, uh, do I bite this bullet? Yeah, I'll bite this fucking bullet. Many of the rioters and protesters were not, let's just say, third generation um, Swedish immigrants. Recent arrivals. Recent arrivals. Let's just put it that way. Right? It's 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 not the end of the story, but it's an element of the story that needs at least mention. The, the large amount of the counter-response to the fucking Quran burning was I mean the whole thing's a shit show. The whole thing's a fucking shit show. Uh, yeah, no, people get mad when you burn their holy shit, but some people get madder. Yeah, exactly, Carpe. Like that's just like stop taking your this shit so seriously. Right? Like on one side, who gives a shit? It's a stupid magic book. And on the other side, who gives a shit? It's a stupid magic book. Calm down. Alright, you don't need to be in the street fucking burning the book in some weird symbolic effigy, and you also don't need to be fucking rioting over this shit. Like, you don't, there's no need to burn anything over burning this stupid book, right? If it's magic and it's the word of God, then it shouldn't even fucking matter. It transcends fire or something, right? He's an omnipotent, omniscient creator. The fucking book means nothing. It, it, if it was truly magical, if it was truly holy, wouldn't it just sort of like reappear like i'm not saying physically but like if you know everybody who forgot the word of the quran like died wouldn't god inspire someone new to like start putting shit down again like isn't this stuff important to god i don't it, the whole thing doesn't make any fucking sense <sighs> non-binary it's all the same Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Finland, fight me. It's all the same. A Danish guy in Sweden burning Korans is exactly the same thing as a Swedish guy in Sweden burning a Koran or a Swedish guy in, uh, in Denmark burning a Koran. These places are like the fucking east, the size of the Eastwood Mall and they all fundamentally speak the same goddamn language. This is the same place. So, whatever. He was a Dane who started the Quran burnings. And yeah, and they all look exactly the same too. They all look exactly the same. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody gives a shit. Look at chat non-binary. Nobody gives a shit. He's a fucking Dane rather than a Swede. Oh no. He went three miles that way. And the magic line changed. Do you believe in borders or not? Because it sounds like you're pretty statist to non-binary, insisting on the nationalistic identities. Hmm, that's pretty nationalist, uh, nationalistic of you, non-binary, to, to insist on that demarcation of an imaginary line. Just saying. Not very anarchist of you. Last time I checked, they were all just humans. Anyway. <laughs> Humans that look an awful lot alike. Yeah.
What are those cultural differences, Alex? What are the cultural differences between a Dane and a Swede? No, no, I'm serious. What are the cultural differences between a Dane and a Swede? Here's a picture of some Swedish people. Let's look up a picture of some uh, Danish people. Oh, wait, hang on. Did anybody notice? I got those reversed. These would be the Swedes. These would be the Danes. Or, or is it? I forget. I've lost track. Did anybody notice though? They all look like Northeastern Americans. Um, those are distinctions without a difference. Cupcake guy, you're messing with my head. Uh, Marcus, I mean, you're all white people to me. <laughs> Marcus. Um, Viva, but not French. Uh, they could be German. Uh, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't know, but not French. I'm saying for the purposes of this discussion, Alex, it doesn't fucking matter. A Dane in Sweden who burned a fucking Quran is the equiv is the ideological equivalent of a Swede in in Denmark burning it. it. They're fucking the same goddamn country for fuck's sake. It's like arguing the difference between Delaware and Maryland. You know Delaware is technically a different cultural set than Maryland. Really? Really? Can you explain to me the differences between somebody from Delaware and somebody from Maryland? Please, Europeans, Europeans who have a dis deep opinion on this. Can you explain the difference between somebody from Delaware versus somebody from Maryland for me? I'll wait. Anybody? I agree, Zippy. <clears throat> All state-related shit. Exactly, Carpe. It sounds like somebody has, has a nationalistic preference, non-binary. Uh, the same goes for Europe. Alex, it's all just stolen culture anyway from importation over centuries of slave running. It's all imperialistic import. None of you have your own original culture anyway. It's all stolen. Funny how that knife cuts both ways. Joe is the goddamn closest. Joe is the only European in that fucking chat right now that actually understands some functional difference between somebody who lives in Delaware and somebody under, uh, who lives in Maryland, and he understands the legal significance therein. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Joe has, Joe has shown he's the only goddamn European in chat right now that actually understands some shit about America. Congratulations, Joe. Uh, you constantly, dude. Uh, yeah, like you, you, dude, your usage of idioms was back in the Podbean days. I was like, holy shit, he knows our idioms and shit. Like, you, you've always impressed me with like your understanding of English and America and shit like that. But you've, you've been here, you lived here, you traveled, it, like, you didn't live here, you traveled here and you partied here and shit like that. So that's not that surprising. What's up, Caleb? Um, fucking, yeah. 
None of y'all understand the difference between fucking Delaware and Maryland, except for Joe, of course. Um, fucking, you're going to fucking hit me with some shit. Oh, he's a Dane in Sweden. Who gives a shit? He's some fucking random white dude burning Korans in a Nordic country. We even call them like Scandinavian or Nordic countries. Like we don't even fucking bother iterating out the the country half the time. We're just like that general region. We don't. You realize like we just we, we call fucking Scandinavian countries. It's like eh, fucking really, really, really white people. Really white people, like blonde white people. Scandinordia. What is this? I mean, from this comic, all I can tell is the difference between a... a, a Let's see. Hang on. That would be Norway, and this one would be fucking. Denmark? Is one has slightly more blonde hair than the other. <laughs> okay. Good to know, Joe. Uh, yeah. Zippy, <laughs> I stand by my crab-based distinction, says Marcus. Zippy, I don't understand the difference between Delaware and Maryland, but I'm American, so it tracks. Um, yeah, dude, we, we would make a distinction for Iceland. They actually did something. They traveled, they conquered, they have their own island. They got the fuck away from y'all, right? They did their own thing. They got into some cod wars. They're interesting. All I know about the Scandinavian area is Sweden is like the deep south of that area, says Caleb. <laughs> By the way, Caleb's one of yours, not one of ours. Mmm, islands. Oh, that's solid work, Marcus. That's solid work. What is a Caleb? Caleb Caleb is a, uh, is a Brit bonger, I do believe. Yeah. Oh, no, we, I, Americans don't give a shit. British is European. It's all European. It's, it's, whether you guys want to have a formal alliance, there is not an American that fucking gives a shit. You're all European. Sorry. Get over it. <laughs> like, Y'all, y'all are more obsessed with nationalities and ethnic identities than we ever could be. You know that, right? Like you guys are way more tribalistic than we are. You guys make Americans look like fucking communist kumbaya land. Y'all fucking, y'all fucking persecute redheads. That's how fucked in the head y'all are about this shit, right? You understand that, right? Like fucking over here, they're just redheads. Like we don't. There's a disproportionate recruiting rate of redheads in in the European areas due to the overwhelming discrimination gingers face because of this. Y'all are insane. Yeah, persecuted redheads into joining ISIS. Y'all are way more tribalistic and fucking nationalistic and border obsessed and fucking group obsessed than we could ever, ever be. We're, we're downstream from the source. You understand that, right? Like, we're downstream from where this shit comes from. Y'all are the OGs of this. Y'all make us look like fucking humanistic, one mind hive, like a hive mind or some shit. Like, it is insane. Dude, there was a great thread on Reddit. Americans of Reddit, what are some truths that the world isn't ready for? Number, thir number three comment. Uh, m number three most upvoted comment. All y'all are way more racist than we are. Africa, Asia, Europe. Straight up called out. All y'all are way more racist than we are. 
some shit y'all aren't ready for. Because you're mostly white people. And, you, and yet you still manage to have like some Balkan shit, all right? Y'all are fucking so insane about this shit that you have the Balkan shit kicking off, right? Like some of the worst shit. Why am I racist for hating 48 European countries? <laughs> yeah, y'all are way more racist than we are. We're just like, eh, fucking, you know, systemically with black people and indigenous people. And we use the Hispanics for labor. Y'all get up to some crazy levels of fucking racism. Y'all, y'all got problems. Like we got problems, but y'all are like the source of our problems. Like this is the font from whence the, the problems flow. <coughs> Brexit. <coughs> yeah. Y'all fucking hit me with some fucking, oh, it matters. He's Danish versus Swiss. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. You fucking nationalistic pricks. Holy fuck. I bet, I bet if somebody from Delaware did some shit in our country and we were like, well, he's from Delaware, Europeans would be like, he's American. Y'all would not recognize a single distinction between our states. Not a single fucking distinction. The only one we'd probably be granted is Florida. If some shit happened in Florida, you might be like, well, that's Florida. Every other fucking state, if I was like, oh, well, that happened in Massachusetts instead. Y'all be like, yeah, that's fucking America. What are you talking about? Not a single fucking one of you would recognize that shit. Meanwhile, you're going to hit me with this fucking Dane Swedish shit. Bullshit. Fuck off. <laughs> Fucking familiarity breeds contempt, you know. Maybe Texas. Yeah, we might get it. We might get an exemption for Texas. You're right. You're right, sir. You're right, mister. Yeah. Maybe Texas we might get one for. Fuck up for that shit. I don't care, non-binary. Congratulations. You're still giving into some weird status nationalistic culture fetish. Y'all have been fucking and interbreeding to the point where to an outsider, the language sounds functionally the same, even though apparently it isn't. And your culture and your people look exactly the same to outsiders. You, it's, it's, it's a non-distinction to the most of the world. Congratulations. You have a hyper obsession with it. And it's, it's a distinction for you. For the rest of us, nobody gives a shit. The difference between Denmark and Sweden is nothing. It's not even a border. It's just nothing. We're like, that's one of those countries in that like general region, right? I'm still waiting on you to give me a distinction between Maryland and Delaware non-binary. Tell you what, tell me the difference between New Hampshire and Vermont. I lived in these places for a long time too. And the distinction matters greatly to me. So please. What's the difference between Vermont and New Hampshire? Culturally. Linguistically. Or it's all sort of the same fucking generic white people. Joe, that's a solid that's a solid choice. Vermont's better at cheese. I can, Alex. It's a that's a vast overgeneralization, actually, of the states. There's plenty of right libertarians in Vermont, and there's plenty of um, like le uh, le uh, lib left in New Hampshire. It's, it's just a general contextualization that we do based on their mottos more than anything else rather than their demographical makeup. They speak the same fucking language, though they do sound slightly different and they use slightly different terminology. And, and colloquialisms might be different between the two areas. Like, this is such a non-point. I know you guys like hamburgers. Yeah, whole region likes hamburgers. Whole country likes hamburgers. 
It, that is true, Axel. Yep. That is true. The Bears. The Bears. The Bears. The guy literally admits at the bottom of the article, non-binary, that it doesn't represent the majority. And by the way, these distinctions, these, these are non-distinctions. These are non-distinctions. This is the difference between Vermont and New Hampshire. This is the difference between one of uh, two of our states. You would never make a distinction between between our states like this. Never. You're fighting for this because you give a shit. You've got an egoistic in, uh, investment in this non-binary. And it's clear. It's clear to anybody who sees. You, you give a shit because you live there. And you've got some, like, historical attachment in your brain to this sort of shit. But, I mean, yeah. Um, oh, Swedes are more collective-minded team players. Vermonters are more collective-minded team players. Danes are more likely to be individualistic and authority-driven. New Hampshireites are more uh, likely to be individualistic and authority-driven. Uh, uh, disliking and avoiding conflict or not afraid to confront if necessary. This is, these are non-distinctions. And the guy admits they're overgeneralizations that don't carry to the majority of the public. Right in the bottom of the article. Come on, man. Stop fighting this fight. It's weird. You're an anarchist. You're not supposed to give a shit like this. You, you are fighting a nationalist's fight. You're literally fighting the fight that a nationalist would fight. It's weird as fuck. You're like, my team is better. It's weird. It's weird. I agree with Kai. There's not enough distinctions between the Germans and the Austrians. We should just take them in. <laughs> just Viva. This sounds like an MBTI list of personalities, not a difference between countries. Yeah. That's because it's written by somebody who has a personality investment. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. Deirdre, seriously, why would you even care? Why would you care? Yeah. Who gives a shit? Hey, guys, somebody from a fucking Scandinavian country started burning books and a bunch of Muslims kicked off and started burning shit in response. Does anybody give any shit which Scandinavian country, where the burning was happening and which, which, where he was from? My dirt is better than your dirt. Yeah. See? Even Foss, no. It's meaningless, Carpet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and the, and the cops fucking came up and started shooting fucking... The cops, the cops did what cops do. <laughs> Deirdre, I, I at all times assume that everybody understands that cops in these scenarios will be doing what cops do. I, I don't... If, if the cops did something else than what cops do, I would probably point that out as a distinction because that actually would be a difference that matters. Yeah. Um, but cops just doing cops. I'm going to assume y'all already assume that cops cops showed up and did what cops do. Escalate and violence. N male rights USA. Let's see if you can. I dude, I talk you male rights. I wish you could hear the shit I say behind the scenes about you. How I fucking want to defend your point. Like, there's a bunch of fucking male rights issues that, like, need talking about. But you're such a douchebag about so much shit. And it fucking... There's no way to actually have the honest conversation around it. Because you just poison the well every time you start on one of your fucking side routes. I, I, I have... I, I'm probably one of the most sympathetic Twitch streamers towards your, your fucking core cause. But, man... Let's see. Let's see. Let's see how fucking how quickly this one goes off the rails. 
Washington cops arrive and announce a riot in response to a protest. <laughs> I love fighting for the lowering of male suicide rates, says as, as Alex. Um, I, you know, yeah. Like there's, there's a ton of fucking male rights issues that need discussing. The disparity in, you know, um, fucking injury, illness, and death on, uh, in, job, uh, in the job structure or the job world. Vast disproportionate uh, amount of um, male um, participants are in those, you know, p- uh, those positions. If you're likely to be in, uh, injured or killed on a job, you're more likely to be in a male-dominated job. It, there's all sorts of disparities that need discussing. The prison disparity, like you know, once you include prison rape and prison sexual assault, you realize that men get raped more than women, right? Like that's once you include the prison system in America, sexual assault numbers actually flip. It, it gets really fucked up. When you start talking about these things from the perspective of this, this analysis, so, you know, if you use proper intersectional analysis and you start looking at these things, you're like, holy shit, there's a bunch of fucked up stuff here. That, but what always ends up happening is the male rights people are just fucking misogynists. They're just, they just want to yell about women. And it's like, that's not helping men. Like, that's not lifting up your brothers. That's not trying to, like, save your brothers. That's not reducing suicide rates and sexual assault rates of your brothers. Like, that's not, that's not helping. It's not helping. It's not helping. Yeah, I'm here for men's rights. I'm here for it. Dude, equality means equality. Men, women, NBs, I don't give a shit. It shouldn't, there shouldn't be, we should be treating human beings fairly and humanely throughout the system. It's just that simple. I, I, I don't care what organs or pieces or whatever you have or identify. How, I don't care. I don't care. I want, I'm, yeah, I'm here for rights, period, end. Like, it's, right, Carpe? Like, I don't, I don't give a shit about any of that. And that discussion needs having. Because there's a lot of fucking discussion to be had around that. Dude, some of the fucking dis, uh, disproportionate affectations, uh, not affectations, but uh, uh, effects of um, being male are really, really fucked up. And that's not to somehow take away from the the, the misogynistic and the, the sexist elements of our society, the, the, the paternalistic elements of our society. That you know, this, this isn't to say that what's happening to women is any uh, any more or less fucked up. It's all fucked up. Your fucked up doesn't make my fucked up any less or more fucked up, right? Like we can talk about two aspects of human society and culture that are fucked. Right? Maybe in different ways, maybe in different amounts, but we can talk about them simultaneously. It's a, it's a thing that you can do. You should uh, dedicate a show to male rights and bait out all the chuds. That'd be interesting. Uh, because that's not the function of prison, uh, male rights. That's not the function of prison. And we should, if you really wanted to analyze that, and you wanted to know why prison rape is such a problem, and you wanted to know why the violence rates in prison are such a problem, then you really need to start going down like restorative justice and prison abolition. I know it's not, you, you as, a, as a sort of like conservative uh, bent, this is like, you know, that's lefty shit. Well, there's a point. There's a reason that we've been talking about this. Dude, this system is broken. It's broken. And one of the symptoms of that, that nature of it is, well, men get raped a lot in prison, a lot. So maybe we should talk about it. Why is prison the way it is? What are the origins of it? Why does it operate the way it does? Even though it doesn't see, it's a seeming net uh, net negative to society. Why do we keep it around? Right? These are these are questions that are valid questions that need asking and answering for oneself. Uh so, yeah, I, 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 dude, I have super fucking, I'm super sympathetic to, to your core fucking cause. But I got to tell you, from what I hear, um, from what I hear from the, the greater community, you're a really, really bad representative for your core fucking cause. And I, I, I you know, I want better for those. 
I want I want I want the, the discussion around human rights to be elevated and not not be lost in the fucking trenches of misogynistic rhetoric. Uh Yeah, no, I, I, Viva, yeah, I know. trust me, I get plenty of, when I talk about it behind the scenes. Male rights, will you have a conversation with me on air? Dude, I'm probably the most sympathetic towards your cause of any fucking streamer on this fucking platform. Like, outside of, like, conservative spheres, maybe. Like, I don't know if there's some, like, red pill motherfuckers running around that probably be down for you. But, like, come have a conversation. I will have that conversation with you, man. I will answer some of these questions. There's there's other alternatives, man. That's a false dichotomy you're, you're falling into. There's, that's a false dichotomy. There is. There's alternatives to that. There's not just the fucking don't, just uh, do nothing alternative. He's not banned in your chat yet. I'll give a conversation to Bash. Yeah. Like, dude, come on the air and talk to me. Fucking, you know me, man. We've been going at this for how long? A lot of months. A lot of months. Chat may grow fucking annoyed with you sometimes, but I always give you a fair shake, I think. So, fucking, come on, man. Yeah, jump on the air and have a conversation with me. Let's talk about some of this shit. Let's talk about fucking male rights. Let's talk about fucking uh, prison reform. Let's talk about restorative justice. Let's talk about fucking getting these corrupt fucking uh, uh, prison officials out of the system, right? Like, let's let's talk some of this shit. Let's talk brass tacks if you want. But, like, I mean, I want to have that conversation with you. I really, really do. Anyway. Uh, okay. <sighs> hey, good to know, Alex. And I, I mean, you know, birthdays, anniversaries, that sort of thing. Temporal markers I'm not huge into, but noted. <laughs> Fucking year gone. Um, it is it, Caleb. It's true. We all know prison is fucking college for criminals. Um, fucking punishment is counterproductive and teaches the wrong lessons to everyone involved. Um, especially the punish uh, the punisher, the pun uh, the person delivering the punishment learns especially the wrong lesson from uh from uh from vin uh, vindictive or punitive justice. Yeah. It, it, it it's we're doing it wrong and there's other countries that do it correctly nordics um the norwegian federal prison system is especially uh impressive um the those fucking ouija bastards um i'm sure there's some infighting going on there fucking europeans can't help but infight um i know who gremlo is lexi uh, Karina just did some artwork for him. Um, I mean, it could be Viva. They're all the fucking same. Norway, Norway, Norway. Banhammer for nationalism. Yeah. That's right. It's just one of the Nordic countries. Whatever. Um... Alex, I'm 100% a Dom these days. I haven't subbed in a while. I 100% switch teams. I'm a full-on Dom master top. Got to catch up, homie. Got to keep with the times. Yeah. And these bitches be lining up. So... The abs put in work. Probably tribalistic. Zippy. 
Yeah. Apparently missed the Do- Kai Dom only arc. Damn, wow, yeah. Oh, no, not switching. There's no switch. Alex, Alex, there's no switch. It's it's just, it's, it is what it is. There's no getting me to go back the other way. It, it's, the, the job is done. Yeah, switch implies that you could go back and forth for the right partner. This is 100% thing. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, all right. Um, oh, for fuck's sake. Mail rights, you're just going to ignore the, you're going to ignore the invitation, huh? You're just going to pussy out. Forgive me for using pussy as a pejorative. Oh, fucking A. You could also probably use um, uh, Zippy. Um, what's the one I want? Chauvinistic. You could probably go for chauvinistic as well, Zippy. Um, chauvinistic would probably get the job done as well, linguistically. Um... He's a, <laughs> I do it. Who fucking cares? He's been a pussy ass bitch. Who cares? It's accurate. Uh, I, again, I mean, you know, England has them as well, or the UK has them as well. But yes, um, oh, this um, this is one of my favorite. Okay, so this guy got um. This guy got fucking arrested in... Where is this? Uh, uh, Yekaterinburg or some shit. Either way. Um, I love this. So this guy was holding a sign that said, War makes it easier to cover up your failures in the economy and social policy. It's easier to rob your people and state. This is a Putin quote. He was literally holding up a Putin quote. And they fucking... They arrested him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. I absolutely love that. Oh, I know, right? Uh, the whole aesthetic is um, interesting. The whole aesthetic is interesting. Just put it that way. Well, he's 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 being a smarmy little fuck. He's being a smarmy little fuck. Um. He um he's holding up a Putin quote, but he's clearly not pro Putin in that instance. Uh so yeah. There we go. Um hmm, interesting. He wasn't pro Putin enough, that's a social credit deduction. <laughs> Uh, I mean, Excel. Yeah, it is what it is, I guess. Seems to be the color they're rocking. Uh, but back to the point, male rights. If you address the root cause in society of, of criminality, which, by the way, is poverty and lack, a lack of access to opportunity. Um, so... then we could actually start the conversation. Oh, somebody's a Dylan Burns fan, I bet. We have never issued a death threat to anybody. Prove otherwise. And we don't dox people. We do a fair bit of trolling, but never coordinated as a community. So... I'm guessing you're just one of Dylan Burns' butthurt fans. That's all. That's okay. And that's okay. But, I mean, it's weird. It's weird. Or you're one of Haz's butthurt fans. Dude, it could be either or. It could be either or. But, we'll see. 
Hey, there's Pocket Has. What's up, Pocket Has? But I'm guessing they're already gone. So anyway. Because they don't have their needs met. This is this is a fundamental misunderstanding of uh, essential needs. Um, then I'm guessing has. we got what do we got what do we got no we got rdf we got hassan oh we got some conservative stuff for sure oh we got a pastor liberty broadcast Ah, uh, we got some sticks, 666. Hmm, we got some furry stuff. Interesting. We got a, bu a few veterans. Probably ex at least uh, stands ex-military. Maybe not actual ex-military. We'll see. What else we got? Hmm, weed smoker. Douglas Adams wouldn't approve of your attitude, my man. Based liberty. The right to think. <laughs> Some of these follows are amazing. At least I haven't found Cuckoo Nut in here. What else we got? Anyway. Saluton. Ah, yes, that was that native Esperanto speaker. Dude, that was crazy as fuck listening to her. Ah, oh, let's see. The U.S. isn't the only place doing capitalism. All capitalist states are involved in criminal conspiracy to exploit everyone else. Um, yeah, I mean, yes. What was that in response to? Oh, it was, oh, okay. Carpe is still actually engaging with male rights. Carpe, good on you. Continue that conversation. Maybe, maybe we can, like, turn the corner on that once and for all. I don't know. I don't know if he's receptive enough to it, but I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that like, dude, male rights, listen to Carpe. Dude, there's, there's some education there you can, you can use. So like, dude, restorative justice processes as, as demonstrated in places like, you know, the Nordic countries are far more productive for society in a net positive rather than a net negative, such as our punitive justice system, which by the way, is nothing more than a cash grab at this point. And we've codified slavery into the constitutional, at the constitutional level with the 13th amendment, except in cases of criminal conviction, right? Like it's, it's, this is baked into our system at this point. Entirely. 
Hey, Jake, thank you for the follow. Um, no, Kavos, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So don't even, you know, it is what it is. Hey, Mirage. Hey, Mirage. Seeing as it's been two years since you last showed up here, um, and the last time you were here, you expressed great concern about whether I was getting laid or not. Do um, you want to come to Vegas and wingman? Because every weekend, I just, you know, you're probably straight. You seem like a angry straight male, but I I can get you laid. No big deal. It's Vegas. So I mean, I just you know, I wanna I wanna I wanna make sure that you're taken care of. You know, I I, I like making sure that visitors to this city are well looked after, representative of Ve Vegas and all. So just seemed it seemed to be of great concern for you the last time you were here. Uh, can someone like that ever get laid? Oh, yeah. Alex. He just needs to learn to shut his fucking mouth and he can get laid. Yeah. that's People like that just need to learn to shut the fuck up. They tend to ruin it for themselves, right? They'll be halfway to the... Fu halfway to, like, you know, r rounding third base, right? And... Fucking whack. Legs just shut. So. Yeah. Step one to getting laid. Mostly shut the fuck up. Yeah, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. It's it's not complicated. A good wingman can get the deal closed for you. You just need to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Marcus at Kai. Not everyone wants sex that involves a toaster, a crying priest, and fire-resistant curtains. But maybe he does, Marcus. Again, I don't kink shame. Just because uh, just because Mirage Leonardo eighty four wants to have sex involving a toaster, a crying priest, and fire-resistant curtains. Who is that? Who who are we? Who are we to judge? Right. As long as everybody's consensual, we'll get, you know, I'll fucking, I'll dust off the toaster. <laughs> Thank you, Wither. Uh, <laughs> curiouser and curiouser, that explains it. I can't shut the fuck up. Also, not getting laid. Um, yeah. Sexual relations are a great way to learn the necessity of selflessness to mutual aids, says Carpe. <laughs> um, unfortunately, it seems that lesson is beyond some individuals, Carpe. It's, it's a shame that it is, but not everybody is capable of it. Some people... Um, call my I call my tongue praxis as beast um so, uh, some people um, lack the particular portion of their brain or developmental portion uh, of life that uh, causes them to experience pleasure from giving pleasure and thus they are wholly rendered selfish for majority of their life. It's rectifiable later in life, but it's very difficult to do. Um, so, yeah. Somebody who is aggressive 
as as that person is out of really nowhere it, it's seemingly probably not gonna happen but who knows Anyway, past, past the morons, past the, we call them pillow princesses. Hate that. Um, I don't know what we call them over here to be frank. I, I don't call them anything because they don't get anywhere near my, well, my junk, my sexual activity. Let's just get the fuck out of here. Especially as a dom. Are you kidding me? Fuck, fuck off. Oh, here. Um, and it doesn't really qualify a DJ, full blown DJ and story time, but here, here's a little mini DJ and story time. There's this couple. All right. So, um, the, the masseuse I befriended here in town, the massage therapist I, I befriended here in town, who's also a dom. Um, he and I, um, he and I have been comparing notes and like, Vegas is a small town, right? Vegas is a small town. And so I'm like, hey, have you been with the black and white couple? And he's like, he's like, no, I don't think so. I said, oh my god, dude, they're like infamous, right? So the 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 black and white couple is it's it's this black dude and this white dude who have this thing for being tied up, like they will be tied up. Okay, so the deal is is the the the, the black dude ties up the white dude properly and then does like a pseudo tie up on himself. And what they want is they'll hit you up and they'll be like, hey, do you want to come over and like you know you can you can give us a hand job and like eat us out or something like that. And it's like you do realize this is in submission, right? And so I'm like, yeah, this, they're kind of infamous. They hit him up the, uh, the, the the next week. I was over at his house. He fucking hooked me up with a massage. We're fucking hanging out, talking afterwards. And he sends me a fucking text partway through the week. He goes, you fucking jinxed me. Dude, they just sent me a message. I'm like, yeah. Dude, yeah, there's this infamous uh, uh, fucking biracial couple here here in Vegas who, who, who tout themselves as submissives. But in fact, they're just looking for like a, an easy hand job. And they're like, yeah, we're tied up. And so you come over and you, you, you stroke me and that makes me submissive. I, yeah, they hit me up. They hit me up a while ago and I was like, that's not what submission is. I straight up, I corrected him. I'm like, that is, you do not know what submissive means. And clearly you're just looking for an easy hand job. I said, don't don't contact me again <laughs> so yeah that was dude yeah it was funny as fuck i was like hey <laughs> he's like yeah dude they hit me up hit the next week they make the rounds from time to time yes wither they like being tied together apparently they're both submissive but one of them is more submissive than the other like uh, they're both submissive I say submissive because they're not. I'm sorry. It's just, it isn't. But apparently in the relationship dynamic, the uh, white dude is submissive to the black dude. Like, so one of them is more submissive than the other. Um, so. Yeah. Yes, beast. It is. It's, a, it's an excuse to be sexually lazy. That's all it is. So fuck that guy. Uh, fuck them. Uh, Winter Mute Live. Thank you for the follow. We're <laughs> just a complete tangent, my man. Complete tangent into fucking. We just fucking first exit off the highway sort of situation. Um, no, not binary. I've never interacted with them. Uh, I do know a guy who did though. He was he was the newbie on the scene. Um, I told him to go have fun with him. So they hit him up because new meat. Um, as soon as he was on one of the the sites. Um, that a lot of the locals use. Um, they immediately contacted him. I'm like, hey, you're new to the scene. Go get your dick wet. Enjoy yourself. Have fun. Um, you'll have fun, you know. Uh, but yeah, when they hit me up, no, no. I told him off. I told him to get fucking lost. Kick, kick rocks, bitch. Yeah, no, a Alex. I'm in the same camp. Like, not even worth it. Not even worth it. Um. So let's see. Oh, uh, I did. Oh, God damn it. I did, uh, I did want to show this. I, I showed this last night when we were on VC, I think. 
It's all over, guys. They're sending in the Gopniks. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. Basically, Wither. Basically. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I had a good chuckle when I saw it. I was like, Jesus, goddamn Christ. Uh, the ch tracksuit mafia up to some shit. The chavs are en route. Uh, cheeky Breaky Battalion. Hashtag squat goals. Hashtag three stripe gang. Yeah. Oh, y'all want to see um, the bonus that um, uh, Amazon was doing on Easter Sunday? This is brilliant, by the way. This is fucking brilliant. It's one of the biggest. Uh, this is one of the biggest companies in the fucking world. All right. This is this is this this is what. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's fucking ridiculous. Thank you all for coming in on Easter Sunday. We're going to run a contest for P2. Anyone picking out, uh, picking over a 310 rate will be entered in a raffle for a snack pack, water slash soda, and a candy or bag of chips of your choice. Good luck, everyone, and thank you. So if you worked over 10 hours on Easter Sunday, you were lucky enough uh, to potentially win like a $2 retail snack pack. If you maintained a picking rate over 310, whatever that metric equals, I have no idea. I bet these snacks are expired too. <laughs> candy or chips, not both. Yes, yes. It's it's water or soda uh, and candy or a bag of chips. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the largest companies in the world, yeah. Three people qualified. It was their first day. <laughs> uh, I know, right, Caleb? Hmm. So I think weird. Like, why even bother? It's almost more insulting. I, yeah, Caleb. Caleb, and this is the company won't let people on drugs work for them. You'd have to be hiding. Uh, I had to put up with that shit. Um. I bet it ain't even it ain't even stolen water bottle by Nestle. Nah, it's some fucking cheap cheaper than Nestle even. Um, fucking Carpe. In the late '80s, I applied to a call center that gave out star stickers for good performance. I didn't go to a center second interview. I just fucking look at him, right? You, right, Carpe. You just like, what am I in kindergarten? Does this shit work on people? But this is. You're, you're, you're not, you should not speak to your interviewer this way. Yeah, you're not my interviewer anymore, homie. I'm not taking this job. Now I'm just another fucking human being. Does this shit work? I'm going to need to ask you to leave. Yeah, okay, I'm leaving, but I need an answer. Does this shit work? You're up here treating motherfuckers like they're in kindergarten with a gold star and shit. Homie, pay me. To be fair, some workers act like kindergartners. Uh, Carpe, yeah, I was amazed. I can buy my own star stickers. Exactly. Pay me, bitch. I'll buy my own shit. Uh, Caboose, when I was working at the gas station, this was some of our incentives since they weren't giving us raises. The, the like, candy... <sighs> Sorry. Not gold stars, right? Like, candy and fucking bottles of water and soda and shit like that, right? I, I presume, Caboose. Or was it gold stars? <laughs> It's like no one would uh, would have noticed a lack of Easter bonus, I think. This almost seems like they're trying to literally be like, you're worth garbage to us. Dance, monkey, dance. I mean, yeah. United Healthcare continually gives out um, uh, fucking stones every year. I don't know if you've ever... Dude. There. See if I can find a picture of one of these stupid fucking things. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, Alex Jones AJ. Here from Proudly Radical. 
Since I owe Kai a few favors from back in the old days. Uh, shit, I probably shouldn't talk about that. Wait, why are you still recording? Fine, fine. Just be sure to edit it out. Anyways, as I was saying, this country was Alex Jones, and I just wanted to teach male rights. What the fuck are you talking about? This country was founded on demanding things from the start. This is how this country was literally created. Chaos, in fact, yeah. it's quite the opposite. Anarchism is about the people. It's about solidarity and mutual aid. It's about removing unjust authority and hierarchies. We should all be anarchists. The world would be a better place. Now, I'm going to apologize again to all those parents whose lives I ruined because I'm such a douchebag. Jones, out. All right, guy, this has got to make us even for that uh, incident you helped me out with. Yeah, I don't even know what your fuck. Yes. Yes, Alex. It was literally founded upon uni students demanding the monarchy fuck off. Like, people have no idea how young the founding fathers were. Dude, one of them was like 13 at the time. Dude, it was like 13 to 25 or something was the age range. Yeah, they were basically kids. I don't know what your, your, no, he's not red. I, that was John Quincy Adams was the fucking 12 or 13 year old. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Um, yeah. Founding kids. Fuck. It was a bunch of kids making demands of adults. Oh, the kids don't have it at all. Are you kidding me? Gen Z is not picking this up, this fight up where it needs to fight. It happen, at least not on this side of the pond. We talked about this at length last night. We're concerned. We're concerned, dude. Roe v. Wade's gonna get fucking flipped in this country. Twenty-one country, uh, twenty-one states already have instant abortions, uh, instant abortion bans on the books. Right? We're we're dude. We're we're losing ground. We're losing ground. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they don't know how to stay angry. I agree, dude. Attention span is a huge problem. Attention span is a huge problem. Oh, uh, curious, sir. 21 states have um, instant abortion uh, bans on books. They're called trigger bans. If um, in June, I believe the Supreme Court is scheduled to um, revisit the um, sort of the state's rights issues surrounding Roe v. Wade. And uh, let me see if I can't get you the list. Um, Alabama, Arizona, Arkansas, Georgia, Idaho, Iowa, Kentucky, Louisiana, Michigan, Mississippi, Missouri, North Dakota, Ohio, Oklahoma, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, West Virginia, and Wisconsin all have trigger bans in place. So at the instant that there is a ruling from the Supreme Court that allows states to decide this rather than um, the federal uh, level, um, they instantly go into effect. There's 21 states in this country that instantly will have abortion bans on the books if Roe v. Wade is pushed back at all. You don't even need a full reversal. If they kick it back to the states and say the states get to decide, 21 states instantly have abortion bans on the books. So... Yeah. Way too easily distracted. Damn whippersnappers. Um, yeah. So, like, yeah, we were talking about it at length last night. We're, we're actually really concerned. Like, that's... <laughs> no. Yorkshire pudding. You 
Hi, my name's Kai. My mom put me in front of a mainframe terminal at age four. I spent my entire life in technology. By age 14, I was doing custom programming. By 25, I was running an independent consultancy in Las Vegas. You want to know what has uh, to do with the shortening of the attention span? It has everything to do with our media format consumption. That. It's Marshall McLuhan's analysis of print versus uh, uh, video media. I, if you've never, if you're not familiar with Mar oh, with the McLuhan analysis of media, uh, of mediums, um, Marshall McLuhan um, investigated what psychological changes happen when moving from uh, strict print format over to the modern television format, and the the effects on the psyche that that has had. Things like TikTok, things like YouTube Shorts, things like the uh, the forever scroll on like Reddit or whatever, things like the quick pickups and drops that that's a, that's affected the intention span it's not the it's not cannabis legalization that's too recent that's too recent no yeah it has to, it has to do with the digitization and the shortening of the medium that that is where i i firmly put it at the feet of Just keep scrolling, just keep scrolling, just keep scrolling. There's always another hit. There's always another dopamine hit. There's always another dopamine hit. Don't worry. That's only 30 seconds. You don't have to worry about it very much. You don't have to worry about it very much. Oh, it's 30 seconds investment. 30 seconds investment. Oh, 20 seconds in. This isn't exactly where I wanted to be. Scroll to the next one. Oh, five seconds in. This is boring. Scroll to the next one. Fucking dude, that has the, that has an impact on the psyche. It does. So, yeah. Yeah, that, that concerns me. That actually does concern me. So, yeah. Yeah, the attention span thing is a little worrying. Oh, let's see. What do we got? Track trans bills? Oh, Jesus. Oh, this is just poorly formatted, but okay. Um, it's weird that I can pride myself on being able to listen to several hour podcast episodes on YouTube videos. All right. I can just sit down and watch like two hours. No big deal. Just two hours. Um, but I mean, I know a lot of people that can't, can't do that. They, they there's, it's just impossible for them to like dedicate their mind to like two chapters of a book even a full chapter of a book just just one chapter of a book that's 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 an impossibility right you know there's so many people i know it, digitally and in real life that just their attention span is shot it's shot and that's that's seriously concerning for <laughs> that makes media manipulation and propagandization um High, uh, more effective that's a force multiplier when it comes to that sort of thing if you can keep them distracted and moving on to the next thing yeah yeah that's 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 an issue that's an issue if i if, if you can't hold your attention on something for an extended period of time dude if i'm manipulating society i can get away with murder i can get away with anything Oh, nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I live in Vegas. Trust me. <laughs> when it comes to manipulating the masses for the purposes of financial gain, I sort of live in like the case study location of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's fucking, that's nonsense. Uh, fucking pot makes you lazy and more lethargic. There's plenty of highly productive uh, individuals. Um, Barack Obama 
Oprah Winfrey, fucking Bill Clinton, fucking Clarence Thomas, Stephen Colbert, John Stewart, John Kerry, George Soros, Bill Gates, George Bush, fucking Rand Paul, LeBron James, Rush Limbaugh, even George Clooney, Bloomberg, Pitt, Tom Brokaw, fucking Phelps. Uh, fucking Jennifer Aniston, Letterman, fucking Martha Stewart, John Hickenlooper, fucking Andrew Sullivan, Jesus Christ, fucking Conan O'Brien, fucking Maya Angelou, um, fucking quote, quote, I settled into a job as a waitress and began smoking marijuana with abandon. That's Maya fucking Angelou, right? Fucking, uh, you know, take, 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 take your fucking pick, man. It's, it's bullshit. Fucking Hugh Hefner, whatever you feel about that man or not. Fucking you're Rick Steves, Rick Steves. I've used cannabis all over the world. And yes, Snoop fucking dog, Snoop Lion, whatever you want to call him. Like, you know, his quote is always, it makes me feel the way I need to feel. But he's pretty fucking productive. The motherfucker's out there doing all sorts of shit. Dude, Snoop Dogg is an industrious fuck. And he's high 24-7. That motherfucker, Willie Nelson, did you know Snoop Dogg pays a motherfucker to have joints ready for him? Like, he's got a professional roller. This dude it rolls the bombest fucking joints. And he's, his job is to have a supply of hand-rolled joints for Snoop Dogg at the ready. When Snoop Dogg goes, I want a fucking joint, it just, like, he puts his fucking hand up and this dude puts a joint in it. That's a full-time fucking job for a motherfucker. He's getting paid a salary and benefits. Yeah, every jazz artist ever, Cat Dev 90 just straight up. Like, it's just nonsense. It's nonsense. All right? Like, it's... Makes you lazy and apathetic. It can if you're prone to laziness and apathy. Marijuana is the great, cannabis is the great, great enhancer. It can make pain worse. It can make pain better. It can make apathy worse. It can make apathy better. Dude, I've smoked weed. Fucking Miles Davis, I know, right? I've smoked weed and I've gotten up and vacuumed and shit because I got fucking, you know, I got shit to do and it, it just gets me in the mood. It, making those sorts of universal um, declarative statements about, uh, about various compounds is always a bit of a rabbit hole. <sighs> Snoop Dogg caused a huge firefighter action in Germany when he smoked so much in the hotel room people thought the room was on fire. Respect. Uh, it depends on the user. Yeah, exactly, Curiouser. Exactly. It's, 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 you know, you know, my brother was okay until he smoked weed and now he can't hold a job and he beats his wife. All right. Y your brother is a fucking lazy wife, a uh, wife beater. All right, he's a piece of shit. It wasn't the weed that made him a piece of shit. Your brother's a piece of shit, right? Like that's it's people fucking come out with those kind of like anecdotal stories, and you're just like, you think it was the weed that did that? Just it's just you know, it is a good carrot on a stick too if you know how to use it for motivation. Yeah, like you know, don't smoke. Don't smoke in the day. Right? Like, when I get all my stuff done, I get a fucking bong rip. Uh, Crimson. Weed, um, weed makes my stepdad more active. He'll, uh, he'll start new projects around the house if my mom gives him too much. <laughs> Shoot, I gotta get high to do chores. I hate chores. I'm curious here. Yeah, if I do blah, 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 I can have a spliff later. So European. Spliff. We don't smoke spliffs on this side of the pond. It's not a thing for us. We just smoke weed. We're not cutting our weed with fucking tobacco or our tobacco with weed. We're just like, if you want a cigarette, smoke a fucking cigarette. If you want a fucking joint, smoke a joint. <laughs> smoke one after the other. Fucking, yeah, we don't, we don't do spliffs on this side. Snoop also so rich, the police took two huge bags away but didn't charge him. As is tradition. As is tradition. Uh, hey, when I smoked weed, I smoked splits because you're weird, Marcus. You don't count. You're an attorney anyway. All you were weird. I still feel like a criminal would be open about it, though. I, You know, I gotta tell you, I've been open about it for a long time. I have smoked... I smoked regularly for almost a decade. Every day. I was high. Dude, when I was... When I was doing those calls... 
for $25 million a year companies and shit like that. When I was a fully independent IT consultant here in Las Vegas, too, I was high as a kite. I was high as a kite. All the time. It's the only way I could put up with those fucking douchebag CEOs. Shit was like that. Fuck, call me at fucking 4 a.m. because you're fucking, you're too stupid to scroll up in your email list. Oh, yeah, I'm fucking smoking a fucking big old bong rip before I deal with your dumb ass. Yeah. 100%. Hundred percent. I was, dude. I was servicing mad big companies here in Las Vegas, high as a fucking kite. It's more submissive. I, dude, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend any time trying to undare program somebody. That's dude, that's some dare program shit if I ever heard it. Uh You know, Kai, the fact that I genuinely considered if I could find data to show I'm not weird kind of feels like I would win the battle but lose the war. Dude, I think you might lose the battle and the war, oh, Marcus. <laughs> You're going to lose the war. At least you already know that one. Just by, But I think you might lose the battle and the war. <laughs> I love you, attorney Fox. I love you, attorney Fox. Marcus, uh, you know, stepdad's a judge. I've known plenty of attorneys. You guys, your brain just works differently. Your brain just works differently. It's fucking fascinating. But I have mad respect for it. Fucking, you need somebody to fucking get in the trenches and argue some shit. Get get an attorney brain. No, like... <laughs> you, <laughs> you go to the ends of the earth to learn about the most obscure data just to back up a fucking argument that means nothing. I love it. Uh... <laughs> Dare worked for me? Why, uh, why? Did you end up as a druggie? <laughs> uh, you don't get to say that every study it uh, says it makes you lazy. Check it out. That's a fact. Sorry. You have to actually cite those studies then. Every study. You have just you have just bitten off way more than you can chew, my man. You should see what I did to a uh, dude that came through here to try and use the human connectome project to back up an argument that uh, comprehensive se early life sexual education is a net negative for society. Dude, I fucking tore him apart. Um, so like you want to go down the study route, uh, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. You have just claimed that every study says it makes you, uh, cannabis consumption makes you lazy. I'm going to require you to cite those sources. Every study. Or are you going to, um, back up on hyperbole really fast, pivot and say majority. If you say majority, I'm going to require a preponderance, a preponderance of evidence in that case. Straight edge, uh, Chisix. Um, and do I have a DOI number on that? I have a PMID number. Um, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Bear with me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I miss Robin Williams. God bless. All right, where is, um, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Jesus Christ.
Uh, God, DOI numbers are so fucking weird. <clears throat> oh, look! The most recent data... <clears throat> On cannabis, uh, on what is called motiv uh, is what is called cannabis a motivational syndrome, which is an old school hypothesis, right? Very old school hypothesis at this point, right? But the, some of the most recent data, as in uh, February of this year, so keep this in mind when he comes back with some study from 1960s. The most recent data is actually done by a group of scientists uh, uh, out of Tennessee. Um, uh, uh, Samuel Acuff, Nicholas uh, Simon, and James Murphy. Um, their affiliations are with the uh, Department of Psychology, uh, with a specializa specialization in psychopharmacology. Um, let's see, at... Where is my, where is my reference? Um... MIT? This looks like MIT. Um, either way, um, here you go. Um, oh, um, DOI uh, links. Uh, we can do the abstracts. Um, here we go. Here's the study in case anybody wants to know. Um, fucking, so here's, it, it's basically related, effort related decision making and cannabis usage amongst college students. But here we go. Um, So, a motivational syndrome is a chronic psychiatric disorder characterized by changes in personality, cognitive functioning, and emotional behavior. It also causes people to partake in less activity, also uh, resulting in the appearance of laziness. Cannabis, a motivational syndrome, is an outdated hypothesis that suggests regular cannabis use can use to, use to less uh, lead to less engagement in goal-directed behavior. Scientists have previous, previously thought that cannabis had an indirect effect on dopamine production to a system called the mesolimbic system. The mesolimbic system is a regulative system that controls cognitive uh, characteristics such as motivational salience uh, reinforcement learning fear and motivation basically the more cannabis that's consumed the greater the negative effect on the system that controls motivation which equals a lazy stoner the test the hypothesis study uh, scientists studied 47 participants who were all college students over half 25 were cannabis users with 68 percent of these matching the criteria for cannabis use disorder the remaining 22 made up the non-cannabis use controlling group participants were asked to complete an effort expenditure for rewards task in the eefrt -E -E uh, 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 RT system, the results which were studied and analyzed by the researchers. The generalized results showed that the participants were more likely to participate in a task that required effort if reward magnitude, reward probability, and expected predicted value were, uh, reward were high. Res further to these results, it was shown that when cannabis use disorder and the number of days of uh, cannabis use in the past month was factored into the results, the likelihood of a participant selecting a high effort, high reward task was even greater. Um, this study shows, in fact, the stoners were the opposite of lazy. That, in fact, the preliminary evidence suggesting that college students who use cannabis are more likely to expend effort to obtain reward even after controlling for the magnitude of the reward and the prob probability of the reward receipt. It's the opposite. Stoners are less lazy than their, their sober equivalents, according to the most recent psychopharmacological study data. Not, not run by an addiction treatment center that profits from that uh, from their, uh, their from their subscription or from their activity or use of their business. So, what you got? Mine's current as of uh, two months ago. Lady Momo. Um, Cannabis is what allowed me to get through college with two degrees at the same time. Caboose, I wonder if it's because people can be, uh, it can be an antidepressant, which can motivate people. Um, <laughs> stoners aren't lazy. Give them a bag of weed and no, uh, no way of smoking and watch some engineering magic happen. That is true. Uh, my ADD makes me lazy, says Chrisix. Uh, let's see. Oh, 
Oh, the uh, the long term uh, motivational system claim has been refuted by multiple studies. Um, because yeah, the, um, the effects on the endorphin, especially, uh, specifically the dopaminogenic, uh, uh, subsystems of the brain, uh, for long-term studies have actually been looked at and it does not have any, um, any long-term effects. Um, yeah, the, there are no permanent effects from, uh, from cannabis consumption. There was a New York state university study that, uh, looked at the long-term cannabis, uh, looked at long-term cannabis users who quit cannabis and they showed normal activity across the board. Yeah, that's been refuted multiple times over at this point. Let's see. Where's the actual study? There's the DOI on it. You want to actually, there we go. Um, oh, Jesus Christ. There. This doesn't speak to stu- uh, this. Um, this doesn't speak to uh, um, uh, the uh, biological psychiatry study that um, he is using for this instance. Uh, doesn't actually speak to laziness whatsoever. It has to do with a subset specialization of schizophrenia rates. It has to do with dop- dopaminogenic alterations affecting subset uh, uh, um, sub threshold schizophrenia rates. It has nothing to do with uh, motivational methodologies or motivational uh, elements of psychiatry. So whatever that link is that Yorkshire's posting or using it, or that cupcake posted, um, it has nothing to do with saying stoners are lazy. Literally. It's not relevant data. Homie, I told you, this is your research hell. So schizo shouldn't use psychedelic drugs. Yep. Dude, I have contacted the entire research departments to get access to walled, uh, walled information and data systems. So <laughs> just, just to do this sort of thing before I'm, I'm your worst nightmare. You cannot make claims like these and not back them up. Yeah, non-subs can post links, 100%. Yeah, this, this, this is, I, dude, if you want to watch, go watch the um, Conversations 2.5 Dr. Uh, Doctor Professor SC episode. And you can see exactly how far I will go down this rabbit hole. I will get these fucking professors and these doctors to, but I, I will email them. Yeah, the raw nerve is that you made an academic claim without any academic founding. That's the raw nerve. It has nothing to do with cannabis. I did this for all. I do this for all sorts of topics. When people oh, when people talk shit and make claims like every study says something. I'm going to require extraordinary evidence to back up said extraordinary claims. And you can't even get mediocre evidence to back up your mediocre claims, let alone extraordinary evidence. See, it has everything to do with the sort of my appreciation for the academic and peer review process. I, 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 I appreciate empiricism. I, I, I respect empiricism. And when somebody says shit, when talks shit like that, and has a clear misunderstanding of the scientific methodology and the empirical processes. Yeah. Yeah, that annoys the fuck out of me. It has nothing to do with pot. I don't give a shit if you smoke pot or not. I don't give a shit if you're a lazy stoner or not. That doesn't bother me in the least. What bothers me in the least is when people are so stupid that they make stupid claims about academic processes that they clearly don't understand. Stay in your lane. Like that's homie. Every study says, uh, says cannabis makes you lazy. The most recent and relevant data on the matter actually disproves that theorem outright. And the data that you've put up, put forth thus far wasn't even relevant to a motivational syndrome related to cannabis. Yeah, this is 
What links? You can go on and on with these links. What links? <laughs> what links? You have no links. You've put no links. You're just full of shit, man. Um, I don't take lightly to ga uh, attempt to, attempts at gaslighting me. Posting um, posting asterisks, uh, um This link proves I am God. All right. Let's... Oh, did I just click something I didn't mean to click? All right. Um, let's go check our settings. Let's see. Um, probably moderation if there is. Let's see. Oh, moderation. I mean, I'm not going to fucking show you my settings, but like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fucking stream my panel. Aspen, post a link. Aspen should have one. Aspen doesn't have a VIP badge. Aspen, post a link. Deirdre doesn't have one. Aspen doesn't have one. Let's see. Don't know. All of my shit is controlled at software level. It says link deleted. I... We see it. I mean, we've seen them. All right, bitch. Post, post more links. Post them. Post your outdated studies. Oh, I just see that stuff about mail, right? Oh my God. No, that's not active. We're not accepting new people in Discord. We're not accepting new people in Discord right now. I mean, I don't even see the fucking asterisks from this guy. Yeah, we're not, we're not taking new people in Discord. Oh, Chrisix, mine is current as of February. Yeah, you've already posted that one, and I've already dis uh, dif uh, um, disputed it. That one is about the dopamine, uh, dopaminogenic function in cannabis users related to cannabis-induced induced psychotic studies, despite the fact that you're like trying to claim that it actually has to do with the motivational system. I mean, you're not even the Imperial College of London is, but when you get into the, uh, the actual study itself, what you find is because once you get to the reference, here we go, I'm just going to fucking go to here, go to the fucking reference, right? 
This is the reference. Okay, so this is the article he keeps posting. Long-term cannabis use may blunt the brain's motivation system. What it's actually about. Reduce dopaminergic synthesis capacity. And the question the hypothesis cannabis increases the risk of psychotic disorders, including, including uh, inducing the same dopaminergic alteration seen in schizophrenia. Has nothing to do with motivation. Next. Just because the blog uh, blog author and you can't read a study conclusion worth to save your fucking lives doesn't mean shit to me. Next. And as Chris X pointed out, or was curious about my study data is relevant as of February 8th of 2022 and directly relates to, um, uh, a motivational uh, syndrome. Yes. Viva. I'm speed running this one after spending two days on the doctor professor one. I just want to see if I can't knock one out and say, you know, 30 minutes. And remember all studies, all studies, all studies, back this up. Just remember the initial claim. Remember the initial claim. Every single study in existence, even though I've already disproven that point, all studies disprove that. Daily Mail doesn't count um, whatsoever. That's not what we're going to look at whatsoever. Um, let's see. Oh, this one literally re uh, relates to a motivational syndrome, which I've already disproven. Okay, so the conversation one, we don't even need to get into because that talks about a motivational syndrome, but it talks about it, uh, let's see, 2016. So it's not current. Uh, it's not even close to current data. Um, let's see. Let's go to the independent. The independent is, uh, get, uh, is uh, walled. You can't even read the fucking thing. Oh, it's also 2016. Uh, none of this is current whatsoever. So you have no current study data. Not within the last like six years even. Good job. Good job. And you tried to post the Daily Mail as a source. Yeah, you guys got me flashing back to my master's program at four in the fucking morning. Chris, Chris, yeah, you can't claim the Daily, Daily Mail as a fucking source, homie. That's not how shit works. I fucking the Daily Mail is not a study source, nor is the independent.co.uk. That's not how this shit works. You would flunk any thesis program. Oh, we might as well, if we're, if we're using the Daily Mail, Viva, we might as well use the New York Post and not the New York Times. The New York Post is closer to the, the Daily Mail. Jesus Christ. Just, just so everybody knows, the Daily Mail... Put this as like a headline once. They, they, they included this photo. So the Daily Mail literally does like alien tabloid headlines. 2016, same outdated data. Same, same study too. It is the same outdated study. Every single one of these headlines ref references the same UCL, uh, UCL study. They're all from 2016. He's just pulling headlines from different media outlets that are reporting on the exact same limited end set uh, study out of UCL that has been since disproven. These aren't even different sources. These are all the same source referencing. Uh, they're all different, uh, different publications referencing the same source. Uh, 
what is this? Alexandra Kritikos, PhD, 2001, uh, 2021, pioneering new methods and data sets to uncover real world trends among medical marijuana patients. Good on her. Good on her. I like to see it. Um, who was that? Didino, thank you. In male rats, it's not even a human study. The one, the, the one study he, he keeps falling back on is a rat study. Not kidding you. The one study he keeps falling back on because he doesn't know how to do a proper DOI search is, is a rat study. Someone teach this man how to cite a source for the love of Athena. Yeah. No, it's, it's not. It's a rat study. Talk to me when you at least get a human study. Jesus Christ. Get it fucking a human study from within the last two years, maybe. Dude, rats. Dude, there's some really fascinating studies about how uh, rats are not the appropriate medium for human scale, t uh, human style testing. Yeah. I've seen a few things on that over the years. When even Forbes is like, yeah, stoner, lazy stoners aren't a thing. Pigs are far better. Yeah. Pigs are a far better analog. Rats are, rats are not even an analog. Yeah, Caleb, you're not even close, man. You're not even close. Which we got. Yeah, Forbes. When even Forbes is like, eh. Let's see. Fuck you. Uh, there we go. Oh, what do we have? What do we have? What do we have? Fully adjusted regression models indicate current cannabis users' accelerometer measured sedentary behavior did not significantly differ from non-current users. Frequent cannabis users engaged in more physical activity than non-current users. Light cannabis users had greater odds of self-reporting physical activity compared to non-current users. Interesting. So the light cannabis users even were better at being honest about their activity level versus the non-cannabis users. Fascinating. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got one. Uh, Gemma, if you need one from um, 2022, February, current data college students, here you go. It's at link in chat so you can keep your data up to date. Yeah. Yeah, we've got we got fe we've got February of this year data on this matter. Um, it's bullshit. It's just bullshit. It's old drug war propaganda and poor, uh, poor, uh, poorly designed studies out of UCL. The University of College London apparently did some rat study that just keeps making the rounds since 2016, and fucking idiots believe it, apparently. Ah, oh, thank you, Dadina. Have you got a single source? You don't even have a single one yet. So you can say, okay, boomer to anyone who says that. <laughs> uh, add a fucking girl, Gemma. Duly noted as well. Uh, Gemma, yeah, we'll take the, you know what? We will take the two, 2018 one as well, though. Drop it in chat. Nightmares um, and... Who replied to nightmares, dude? I'm 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 in that Kim Campbell, dude. Like Weekly World News and stuff like that, dude. I miss the old school conspiracy theory era, right? Fucking, it, you know, the Bermuda Triangle and Edgar Casey and fucking Bat Boy and shit like that, dude. Those were, oh man. 
Uh, yeah, we've we've had a few so far, by the way. DMs, thank you, thank you. Oh, okay. It's just the full-on study. I res I respect the fuck out of it, Gemma. Gemma's just like, here's the study, bitch. <laughs> just, here's, here's the study. Oh. Uh. Hey, it even it even calls out how prior studies were poorly optimized. That's hilarious. Uh, okay, so we have three different studies. Um, let's see. This is... Who did this one? Florida International. All right. So we've got three separate studies going from... Um, we've got 2018, 2021, and 2022. We've got three separate studies, all showing that a motivational syndrome for cannabis users, both chronic um, uh, and light unit uh, light users, is bunk. What you got? I don't really care. I've already put it on screen, and uh, I've got the fucking here's the, here's the actual study uh study link uh Gemma further further studies have shown that the, the link is untenable um in fact the um the cannabis use and sedentary behavior one shows that there's an increased rate plus they did um uh motion tracking on them um they did uh physical activity tracking and they found that the cannabis users had a higher rate of physical activity than the uh, non-cannabis users. Also, one of the weird, uh, like, worth noting effects here, that the light cannabis users were, um, uh, were uh, uh, how do they put it? They had greater odds of self-reporting physical activity compared to non-current users. So essentially, the light cannabis users, when comparing the actual collected data versus the self-reported data, the light users were far more accurate and honest in their data reporting than the non-cannabis users but yeah the um uh, the, the two separate studies um one college students a motivational syndrome um they found it was completely bunk and then as far as physical activity goes um the one that was studying f actual physical activity of cannabis users found that they had an increased rate of physical activity as opposed to a decreased rate so as you move forward in the data from your uh, from your study, Gemma, it gets worse and worse and worse for the argument that stoners are lazy. Yeah, every year that goes by, and we have a uh, a less and less biased, dare program oriented mindset conducting the study uh, conducting the studies. What we find is that it's just less and less and less. And, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, dare is dare is dare is the worst thing. If you want people to not do drugs, don't do dare. Dare is a terrible fucking program. Uh, where am I getting tagged? Oh, nice. Or or you know that. There we go. Dare to think for yourself. Drugs are really expensive. That was always my favorite. Uh, I said it before. Me and my bro did a four, a three-hour motor swap. High off our asses on dabs. It was a great day. I think people are making wrongful conclusions. Uh, they wouldn't let me keep up the f uh, fucked up long in a try. Uh... Viva, I think people are making wrongful conclusions. Are lazy people more often stoners or are stoners more lazy? Ah, look, you're looking. Viva's looking for a causality. Interesting. Viva looking for actual nuance. Fascinating. Fascinating, Viva.
Jesus, that fucking just skipped a whole bunch. There we go. This study you posted literally says it's equivocal. That a motivational syndrome is equivocal at best, and that they ha- uh, they the two uh, the, s- the results from the two longitudinal studies um, re- reward sensitivity is that at best they will go, uh, they will go, but they also conclude that because motivation is a multifaceted construct, their uh, their studies were poorly designed to take this into account. And then this is a 2019 study, a better designed study who happened uh, happened in 2021, and its results were published in 2022, which take this uh, uh, this multitudinal study uh, into account, and they conclude the opposite. This is a problem with using old data. You might as well. You might as well be fucking talking about consuming um, mercury to heal your ulcer in your stomach. Yeah, we believed it once upon a time. Also, by the way, um, remember the original statement, everyone. Every single study says smoking weed makes you lazy. Um, yeah, it'll be in um, citable sources, Zippy. It'll be in citable sources. I'll hook you up. We'll, we'll get all three of them. We'll get all three of them going. There's one. There's two. And let me get you what Gemma put up. There's three. All of it's incitable sources. I mean, why wouldn't it be, Alex? Why wouldn't it be? A forceful stimulation of appetite? You're going to be hungry. Eat, bitch. Right, a lot of what the the um, anorexia methodologies for like actually like when you're engaging in anorexia, tamp uh, tamp the hunger cycle, like hormonally tamp uh, suppress the uh, hunger cycle. Cannabis induces that. Yeah. Yeah. So that ma- that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, that's just you know, fucking. You got an anorexic kid, fucking toke. Fuck it. Would you rather a dead kid or a stoner kid? Smoke up, bitch. Ah, no worries, did you know? Also, by the way, just a little heads up for those that um, want to pop, like want to cite sources, read them first. I I find this 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 is um um uh, <laughs> here's a full fridge and a pile of motivation. Have fun, right? Um, I find that this is one of those weird things that I have to point out. Um, one of the, uh, best thing, uh, one of the best things that you can actually do, uh, when you're attempting to argue a point and cite your sources is read said sources. It's a fascinating thing. Even in the, just an abstract plus the conclusion or a results section, depending on what you, uh, uh, who designed the study, um, try reading them. It's amazing how often you find that, uh, people post sources to me that don't actually say the things that they think they say, because all they've done is gotten the source from a blog posting of somebody who didn't read the source either, you know, like posting a daily mail link. Having done a neuropsychology seminar last se- uh, se- semester, it's really, really hard to find reliable link to brain damage, even in specific areas to impaired functions that are showing up. Imagine how fucked we are in terms of figuring out what drugs do, even though they could be acting anywhere and have any kind of effect you're presenting, including placebos. Um, yeah, uh, nightmares. Uh, that's why I I started my psycho- uh, psychopharmacological studies at age 14. And I'm a student of Alexander Shulg, and this is, this is why like these sorts of things are familiar to me, right? I started looking into these things very, very young. Um, it's a fascinating field of study. Psychopharmacological studies are beyond f- just interesting and fascinating, right? Because every single person react could react differently even. 
right? Like it's, it's not just the biochemical, electrochemical feedback loop that you're, you're investigating, but you're also investigating the psychological link into that biochemical, electrochemical feedback loop, right? It's, it gets so sloppy. It gets so messy. It gets so nuanced so quickly that it's just this amazingly deep, fascinating field that I think that that well will be, we'll be diving that well for quite some time. We'll be diving that well for quite some time. And when people make these sort of declarative statements, absolutes and stuff, it's like, dude, it, when it when it comes to, you know, pharmacology, but not not only pharmacology, specifically psychopharmacology, when it comes to psychopharmacology and you make de absolute declaratives, you're immediately wrong. You're immediately wrong. There's no way to make that absolute. There just isn't. Um... Hey, Clay Ben, thank you for the follow, by the way. We're just, we're on the back, we're on the back side of a conversation here about whether or, whether or not pot makes you lazy. It's the long and short of it. Oh yeah, Viva, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's long been known, the route that if you remove the criminalization aspect of drug use and add a medical uh, aspect rather than the criminalization aspect or the legal aspect of it, then you can get people into treatment much quicker, m quicker, easier, and you have uh, a, a, a multitude of benefit, uh, uh, positive outcomes as a result. Yeah, that's just, I, I, I would think that's common sense at this point, but I mean, I live in America, so it is what it is, man. Uh, Crimson, yeah. <laughs> Gemma, honestly, I wouldn't know, but it's definitely not a prerequisite for sloth. I should know. Love your usage of sloth, by the way. Um, one of the most interesting anecdotal things I found with cannabis was that most people I know or knew that smoked were absolutely brilliant and you actually used cannabis to help shut off their brains, analyzing and overthinking, so they could actually get shit done. I'm in that camp. Yeah, same camp. Um, they decriminalize drugs and overdose rates went down 80 fucking percent. Yeah, sounds about right. We had a lecture on attention and I asked the professor about ADHD and she basically dismissed my question with a quick, oh, we are miles away from being able to say anything sure about that at all. <laughs> Imagine trying to make super sure claims about drugs at this point. Yeah, nightmares. It's fucking, dude, it's as best we can tell, current data states that a, uh, a motivational syndrome or a cannabis related a motivational syndrome is a non-factor. That's what the most current data states. You know, data from the last four years has been stacking and the data, the most recent data that takes the most, you know, um, um, multitudinal variables uh, into account and actually does a proper cross-sectional analysis seem to come down on the side of nothing. So, yeah. <laughs> but again, Nightmares. We know nothing. What is your opinion of CBD oil and CBD products? Like my opinion, Clay, Clay, I don't, Clay Ben, they're beneficial. They're beneficial. Uh, if you want like a legalistic opinion, I'm an anarchist. None of that ever comes into play for me. Like if it works for you and you enjoy it and you think it has a net positive in your life, have at it. Enjoy. I don't give a shit about any of the other reasons. Um, as long as you think that it works for you, use it. I'm an advocate for you. Weed does create jobs. Yeah, weed does create jobs. If we legalize the cannabis in this country, you create tens of thousands of jobs and create billions of dollars worth of revenue. Yeah. If you're if you're a capitalist and you're big into free market shit, dude, legalization of cannabis is a huge boon. Colorado has proved that. Nevada has proved that. Fucking California has proved that. Fucking Oregon, Washington. Fucking take your pick. New Mexico legalized last week. Good on them. Boomed the economy. Of course it does. It, it always does. Dude, Colorado rocks surpluses from their fucking budget because of the, the cannabis taxation. 
which was bullshit, by the way. Just fucking decriminalize it. Don't legalize it. Don't fucking tax my shit. It's like 30% tax here in Nevada. It's fucking bullshit. Fuck off with that. But, you know, if you want to have the free market conversation, then there's the free market conversation, at least. <laughs> Excellent. No, it's stalled in the Senate right now. You say it's inevitable, but there's some powerful interests at play. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, all that sweet, sweet tax monies. Ah, uh, catch you later, Zippy. We'll, uh, God damn. State doesn't deserve a penny of it. No, they fought it for so long. Carpe, I'm in the, I'm in the fucking, you fought us for how long? You threw how many of us in jail, especially fucking black folk, right? You threw how many of us in fucking jail for how many fucking decades? And now you want a 30% cut? You mean you want to pay in a 30% cut? Like you fucking federally subsidized fucking weed? Is that what you're telling me? Because you're going to come up in this fucking house and tell me you want a 30% cut after you spent fucking the better part of a fucking century criminalizing and disrupting communities and leaderships and fucking lives over this stupid little fucking plant. Oh, you can fuck right off. Yeah. Yeah, and they don't want to expunge records on top of everything. Dude, that's some racist ass shit. The not expunging records is some racist ass shit, and you know it. That's some racist ass shit. Uh, Yorkshire Pudding is uh, uh, the, the the user here. Um, smoking uh, it says, I will stay by my statement. Smoking cannabis makes you less motivated, and that is a fact. Yorkshire Pudding knows nothing, has no academic background, and has no standing to uh, actually back that statement up on, and that is a fact. Everything they say from this point out is incorrect. Or at least subject to higher scrutinization. Fact. Also, I'm a god amongst men. Fact. I have the biggest penis ever in the history of mankind. Fact. You have not worked in the field. Fact. You see how this works? Just declaring fact after things doesn't make it true. I know more about this person than they know about themselves. Fact. Caleb, I worked in your mom. Fact. I worked in his dad. Fact. Axel has a bigger penis than God. Fact. Aspen, I make all the humans coom. Fact. I am a two-door sedan. Fact. If anybody needs to wonder who the fuck that is, you should know automatically if you're a member of this community. <laughs> fuck it, Kavaz. Uh, Viva, I am his dad. Fact. <laughs> Conservatives can't alter their viewpoints when confronted with overwhelming evidence. Fact. <laughs> I am the god of chaos and weed. Fact. Also, the moon is made of guacamole. My tits are detachable. Fact. I am looking at porn. Fact. <laughs> fucking just declaring things facts doesn't make them true and all of your all fucking the t the two studies you managed to put up fucking linking to the daily mail and the fucking independent which are linking to the exact same study which has already been debunked and disproven right you've managed to link to two studies both of which one of which didn't say what you thought it would say and the second one has been since di disproven nine ways to fucking sunday fact Fact. Did his fucking. <laughs> you made your pain worse. Fact. Uh, fucking. I'm really a frog on a, on a kiosk iPad. Fact. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, the fact that they bothered to link to the Daily Mail, Mail. <laughs> Daily Mail is when I lost it. Yeah, dude. Fucking. I got a source. It's the Daily Mail. If you consider. If you consider the Daily Mail a viable academic citable source. You don't understand what a fact is. Like that's your academic credentials go out the window 
when you cite the Daily Mail, <laughs> unless it's a study on like propagandization in the media or like, you know, that sort of thing, like unless it is a study upon the medium itself in which the Daily Mail would be a viable citable source somewhere within the uh, within the study data itself that you're like, oh, here's an example of some crazy shit that people just lie and put on the fucking in the on the front page. The Daily Mail would be citable in that instance. But if you're attempting to do an academic study citation and you cite the da uh, Daily Mail, chances are your credentials or your qualifications or your expertise in this area uh, are going to be highly questioned at that point. Fact. Got there before you, Carpe. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's there's a reason to cite the Daily Mail if you're talking about, you know, bullshit in media. But I worked in the field but can't cite academic studies, say people involved in growing fields full of pot, but not much else, says Gemma. Fact. Fact. Snoop Dogg is such a productive member of, of the free market society that he actually creates jobs for, for his weed consumption. Your, your capitalistic analysis, your Smithian analysis of Snoop Dogg having somebody else roll his blunts failed. Fact. He's that much of a productive member of our capitalistic system. That he's creating jobs just to just to have people roll his bonds. Yeah. He needs a money sink, basically. Kvass is right. <laughs> I worked in the field often means I have a friend who grows and I sometimes trim for them. Fact. Yeah. Like Wait, did somebody do pee is stored in the balls? Fact. Papa. Papa fucking John. Yes. Fact. You earned your stay in hell. Fact. Oh, I hope so. Dude, dude, hell is... Oh, it's where all the interesting people are going to be. God, I wouldn't want to be in heaven. Dude, if heaven and hell exist and it is set up the way it is, it, like, <laughs> that's the last place I'd want to be. What's up? Little pocket has... Love myself a little pocket has. There are only two holes. Fact. Hell is going to be banging. Yeah. All the interesting people would be there. All the interesting pe people. Two hole theory. Let's go. Fake people act like hell is hell's fun. You need, you're missing an apostrophe. It's hell is fun. Um, but Okay. Homie, you're just some rando on the internet. Like, honestly, nothing you say matters to me. It, it's really difficult to troll me. Like, I don't give a shit about you. Other than I want the what's best for you. I would like the state to stop invading your life. I would like authoritarian forces not to have their boot on, on your neck on a daily basis. I'd like you to live under a less coercive, less oppressive system. Like I care about you as a human being, but your opinion, frankly, about me or otherwise. Yeah. I won't even remember you when I hit end stream. You're just water off a duck's back, my man. Anyway, all the interesting people would be in hell. Based on the, the metrics that are set up, all the interesting people would be there. I don't want to hang out with a bunch of fucking Mormons. It's just... Yeah. Oh, I wish I had, I wish I had that, uh, I had an, a true, uh, a true photographic memory. That'd be great. If I remembered everything, oh, that'd be amazing. I mean, it's a little bit of a curse, admittedly, but I, I, I wouldn't mind that. That'd be, dude, to have instant recall of everything you've ever read, just to, full instant recall of obscure academic text from decades ago and shit like that. That would be absolutely stunning. I wish I remembered everything. That would be, that would be a marvelous tool to be able to have. 
imagine imagine the 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 conversations you could have with people to be amazing Oh yeah, Che, they don't they do the Oh god. Yeah, they do the the pray for their soul fucking thing. Yeah. Fuck fondue parties, meet me at the blood fountain with a bottle. Fuck yeah. Being able to read Shakespeare from memory. I know, right? Like that would be, you know. Yeah, like you'd have some fucking cringe moments, I'm sure, but I mean, who cares? Right? To be able to cite, like, page 314 of, you know, the fucking whatever. It'd be, you'd just be rattling it off. Word for word. That, dude, that'd be an amazing skill set to have. Hey, good on you, Alex. Good on you. Baptismal proxy, that's what it is. That's it. Good on you. Good on you, Alex. Real time fact checker to the stars. Yeah, dude, Carpe. That's a that's a that is actually a monetizable skill set, isn't it? To just be able to like lean into somebody and be like, that'd be fucking yeah, dude. That'd be that'd be a hell of a person to have around. Somebody who has a truly uh, a truly photographic memory and uh, like has filled it with relevant data. That'd be a fascinating thing. 440 calorie sandwich just now and a bowl of ramen last night. Keep, keep pushing. Keep pushing. <laughs> the thing about heaven is that heaven is for people who like that, uh, like the sort of thing that go on in heaven. Like, uh, well, singing, talking to God and watering pots of pl pot plants. Yeah. Uh, if I recall correctly, Hitler had an aide whose only job was to remember everyone's name, job, and interesting facts so he could greet everyone with, oh, Captain, is your wife out of the hospital yet? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, it's, it, that's a monetizable skill set. 100%. Imagine remembering everything. Everything. It's just, it's just a conversation in passing. You walked by, you were walking down the street and you can just, you remember you know, fucking 19 years ago, those two people walking down the street and that one man said to the other, uh, the other woman that, you know, yeah, that'd be an amazing skill set to have. And this motherfucker's trying to curse me with it. <laughs> this dumb motherfucker, this dumb motherfucker walks in off the fucking street and is like, yeah, fucking, fucking homie, I wish I had that. I don't even, I, I already, I don't even remember whatever that moron's name was. Fucking, <laughs> fucking, yo, it's gonna, fuck it, uh, fucking, it's gonna go over, like, I don't even, I don't even remember what the fucking, oh, <laughs> oh, let's see, uh, Exol, what you got for me? Y'all read up on the uh, Asvestal steel plant. It's interesting stuff. It was originally destroyed during World War II and Stalin ordered it to be rebuilt and reinforced with significant concrete and armor works as well as nuclear bunkers and underground tunnels designed to withstand a nuclear blast going off in the city center. The plant was subsequently upgraded and reinforced a couple of times over the last decades, most recently in 2014. Hmm, interesting. Are there pictures? If somebody can find me some fucking, like, I mean, I can, I see shit, but I mean, not, not what I'm after. Like, if anybody's got any, like, fucking, like, holy shit, that's a bunker sort of photos. Throw a brother a link. It is, mister. 
It is. It is. It's a straight up superpower. Although uh, it usually comes. I know I've been using photographic, whereas the technical term is eidetic. Uh, and I respect the fact that you actually know eidetic, um, Mr. Sir. But OK, which there we go. Um, oftentimes, a truly eidetic memory comes at a deficit for the rest of the like social functioning goes out the window sort of a situation. You get very sort of spectrum-y pretty quickly when uh, when you deal with that sort of thing. So, yeah, there seems to be a, you know, give and a take with it. You also see how much everyone likes. I mean, you know, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Sir. Uh, I've, I've seen a few iterations of people with uh, eidetic memories over the years. They tend to lose social functioning or other aspects of what we consider neurotypical cognition. So, yeah, it, it, it tends to seem to balance out a little bit. Um, it's an unfortunate thing. There are rare, super rare instances, though, where eidetic memories are just in with people that you're like, holy fuck, really? Yeah, just some random dude, some random chick. They have a fully eidetic memory, but it's it's a rarity. It's a rarity. I mean, it's already a rarity, right? Um... Conversations get weird when you remember every time someone has said Tuesday to you. So the Russian cheerleaders have been claiming the Azvasal bunkers are home to bioweapons labs. Yeah, they've been claiming that everything is a bioweapons lab. Fuck them. Not to mention it's uh, not going nuclear when you snap at them multiple times. Oh, uh, are they still having that side coverage? I don't understand why patience is is even, like, I don't understand the criticism. Like, Alex, Alex doesn't have a lot of patience, okay? And lots of people don't have lots of patience, especially for things that irritate them, right? Like, I, I, I don't understand the criticism, like, at its core. Like you, you, you lack patience. Okay. And patience is a spectrum. Also, reserves of patience can be taxed. A couple decades of research into my lived experience suggests to me that I traded some social function for a memory upgrades. Not close to eidetic, but it's good enough for people to remark on it from time to time. Carpe, I have a, I have a decent memory. I have a decent fucking memory. But night caboose. Yeah, Alex doesn't owe you any patience. Like, I, I, I don't understand these people with parasocial relationships. Uh, it's, it's, it's strange to me that people think. I, I find, uh, and um, <laughs> I, Babu, um, thank you for the follow, man. Um, oh, it's been a long winding road, my man. It's been a long winding road. Um, right now, it's just sort of a critique of. Uh, attempts at parasocial relationships between, I suppose, chatters and streamers. Um, but beyond that, it's, you know, is what it is. Um, we were just coming off a uh, sort of uh, ap academic level investigation of whether um, amotivational syndrome, uh, it, it, cannabis induced amotivational syndrome was actually a thing. Current data stands that it probably isn't. Um, and that's sort of where we are now. Um, but feel free. If you've got anything on your mind, feel free to bring it up. Uh, but we're just sort of, you know. You speak on the fact that I shelled last night after someone triggered my ED while I was eating on stream. Oh. So. Somebody. Interesting. It doesn't seem
seem like a good person. Yeah, you don't seem like a good person. Oh, that's why he's so invested in it. He spent time doing it. Oh, your continuing education needs up caught up then. He's he's literally got he's this is this is the thing. This is the thing. It's like when cops fucking talk about this shit. Yeah. Oh, you fucking you you your part of your identity is attached to it. That it's your ego that's speaking, not academic data. Oh, thanks for giving that away. Yeah, that's the ah, that's the bone. Yeah. Like this motherfucker's ego is attached to it because he spent time doing it and he taught a bunch of people this bullshit. Yeah, it's a sunk cost fallacy like a motherfucker up in this bitch. Oh, fuck me. It makes sense now. It makes sense now. Dude, you've been out spreading fucking bullshit uh, nonsense and propaganda. And now your ego's all attached to it and it's all twisted up in your head. All right. All right. All right. I get it. I get it. Cool. Cool. He also attacked me because my house isn't 100% clean because, you know, I'm a cripple. <laughs> it's stunk of ego issues, his ass with. It makes more sense now. Yeah. You need to let all that shit go, man. You need to let all that shit go. <laughs> Can't admit you're wrong after you've been making money being wrong for all this time, Scarpe. It's a bitch, ain't it? What's that quote? Who is that by Carpe? Um, it's difficult to uh, it's difficult to convince a man of something when his livelihood depends on it. Yeah, Mark Twain, <laughs> Upton Sinclair, Orwell, <laughs> fucking just fucking. <laughs> Uh, yep. Bringing your bias to a conversation in here is like bringing a ball gag to the Blue Oyster Bar. Roy Rogers, any of them. I know, right? Like, it's just pick, pick one. Oh, and respect on the Roy Rogers one, Carpe. Old school cut. I respect it. Uh, he also can't, he probably can't admit that he uh, harmed people more than he helped because he was uninformed or misinformed, misinformed. I would go with misinformed, but yeah, he probably actively caused harm because he was misinformed. That's, that's rough to take on board. That's, did you, that's, that's a difficult thing. Like, oh shit. Yeah, dude, the kid, dude, carpet, carpet. None of the kids today know who, know who the fuck Roy Rogers is. <laughs> Oh, uh, fucking A. I used, to have, I used to have a Roy Rogers museum in my town that even had the OG trigger. Fucking A. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Kids today, man. Father of the phrase, trickle down economics. Yep. Roy Rogers sounds like he was written by Stan Lee. He was. Yeah, he was. Well, you two are old. <laughs> we are old, but we're not Roy Rogers old. I mean, Carpe, Carpe's on that. Like, Carpe's seen, like, but I've seen the same sort of shit. Like, neither of us is Roy Rogers old. Like, that's our parents' generation sort of territory. Like, Roy, yeah, that's, we're not Roy Rogers old. Um, but, you know, our media education is deep enough to include Roy Rogers. Aspen, I've watched Roy Roger movies. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Uh, to be fair, it's hard to unlearn a bias in the workplace. It's hard to question the authority figures that help define your professional identity. Gemma, it's true. Not even I'm Roy Rogers old. My mom is not Roy Rogers old and she's in her 80s, says Gemma. Dude, it's fucking... Dude, Roy is a ways back, right? But... Like if you've got the media education, you've done some film appreciation or, you know, that sort of thing. You've, you've, you've been around. You know Roy Rogers. Fucking trigger. <laughs> it's, uh, got shut down. I think they sold trigger. Nobody was visiting anymore. Aw. I, he's 
still going. He's still going. That's amazing. Or if you were a latchkey kid in the 70s, you saw some Roy Rogers. <laughs> oh, latchkey kids. Do we still have latchkey kids? Or have, like, helicopter parents in the digital era completely removed? I uh, was off Hashburger. Um... I'm sorry you almost got beat up, but you almost, so it turned out well. You, you almost got beat up, so you didn't get beat up. So, you know, bright side, I suppose, but I'm glad you didn't get beat up, Hashburger. Um, and, yeah, do they have latchkey kids anymore? Is that still a thing? <laughs> Fuck it. Or have, like, digital helicopter parents completely killed off fucking latchkey kids? Uh... How many of y'all are so engaging with him? Um, let's see. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, fucking a. Oh, by the way, um, um, uh, if you're a video gamer, look forward. Um, Microsoft and Sony. Um, <laughs> I remember Roy Rogers as a ch uh, chain of fast food restaurants. Um, yeah, that's definitely a thing. Um, uh, latchkey kids still exist. They just usually go home and turn on their Xbox instead of drinking in the fields and shit. Are they latchkey kids if they're not drinking in the fields and shit, Alex? This is my philosophical, this is my existential question about latchkey kids. If they aren't drinking in the fields and shit, are they truly latchkey kids? <laughs> um, heads up, Sony and uh, Sony and Microsoft are both planning on putting ads like in game directly. Like they're apparently Sony's like literally the headline is Sony is cooking up plans to run ads in PlayStation games. Microsoft is doing the same with Xbox. So just heads up, like there's going to be a whole new system of advertisements in your video games. Uh, technically, yes, but they're doing it wrong. This is Alex. I'm on team. I'm on team. No, <laughs> they don't count. Come up with a new term. That's not a latchkey kid. Um, puts on fire. Uh, <laughs> yar, yar, yo, ho, ho, and a bottle of rum. <laughs> Che, Che, how many times? How many times is it going to take, Che? <laughs> I remember how we did it. They do it wrong. Goddamn right. Um, dude, Exol, apparently it's finally getting rolled out. That's all I'm saying. Um, keep an eye out for it. Third tries to charm. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, she's still doing it. I um... Oh. One of my favorite movies is Son of Pale Face. Jesus. Um, is there anything? Oh, dude, that Netflix stuff is hilarious, by the way. Bob Hope. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, uh, what's the one? Um, what's the famous Asian one? Um, who, who played the Asian dude? What, what white dude? What's the one I'm thinking of? Carpe, help me out. It's super fucking racist. Super fucking racist. Um, white dude played an Asian dude. Rooney. It was yes, it was Rooney. Fucking a, dude. Ah, uh, there we go. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Super fucking racist. Just insanely racist. Hold on. Hold on. You want... Here, here's the fucking credit screen. Here's the fucking credit screen. It's fucking amazing. Oh... <laughs> uh. We old fucks deserve more credit for shaking off all that racist bullshit. Yeah, right?
Uh, Gen X did some an great anti-racism work. I, Gen X didn't do some. I, okay, Gen X just didn't give a shit. Gen X just, just didn't check in. <laughs> Gen X was just absent for the entire conversation. It's like fucking. Hey, did you hear? Fucking society's racist. Gen X is sitting there going, "What? Somebody say anything?" Dude, they, they just weren't present for the conversation even. <laughs> like, they weren't there for the indoctrination. They weren't there for the fucking, uh, like, exculpation. They were just, they're just absent the entire fucking time. Like, fucking Gen X is just a non-generation. They were so small demographically that they didn't matter. Even, even the system sort of gave them, gave them a pass of sorts. Like, a lot of the fucking, like, restrictions that the system typically puts upon its citizenry, Gen X just sort of escaped because they were so dem small demographically, they just didn't matter. Gen X motto. Whatever. It, it really was. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Steven, aggressively Asian face Crowder, strikes again. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Holy fuck. Some racist ass shit there ever was. <laughs> I mean, at least Mickey Rooney's was fucking back in, you know, the before times. I mean, it's cut for two. It's comedy, just not in the way he intends it to be. And it's not comedy involving Asian people. It's comedy involving some sad white dude from Canada. Uh, fucking. Uh, <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, Caleb, <laughs> I've had those conversations with you. Yes, I can. <laughs> yes, I can believe that. <laughs> after after that one particular conversation with you, yes, I 100% can believe that. Um, I'll be, I'll be, they were <laughs> the silent generation, but I'll be damned if they won't shut the fuck up now. Bigger whiners than the boomers. Oh, oh, oh. No, no, no. You cackled. Yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> fucking. Yeah, believe in that. Uh, a bill has just passed our Senate. Really? Oh, Tennessee Senate. Oh, never mind then. I was going to say, that passed our Senate? A bill passed in Tennessee uh, requiring convicted drunken drivers uh, to pay child support if the parent dies. So, ten Tennessee, it got passed the Senate in Tennessee. I it was like, Jesus Christ. But, um, yeah, somebody posted that as just the, passed the Senate. I'm like, that got passed our Senate? Um, but, yeah, Tennessee looks like they're passing a law that, like, if you... If you're drunk and you kill some fucker and they have a kid, have a kid, congratulations, you're paying child support now. I'm okay with it. Um, Exel, it would make it a, like, it would be another layer. It'd be another legal protective layer. So... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, of course, at the same time, they were trying to remove the age of uh, consent attached to child marriage. So, you know, just remember, this is Tennessee we're talking about. So, you know, ho hold your applause. Same Senate. Same Senate. You know, so don't give them too much encouragement. They, they removed the... They made it, um, they removed the, they added a line 
to it to make it so it isn't just fucking eight-year-olds that can get like incestuously married off like there's there's some verbiage that ties it to like the 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 generally recognized age of consent or some shit like that there's there's some legalese that makes it so it's not fucking 12 year olds getting married to 46 year olds and shit like that but (laughs) here's the question do you have to pay child support if the child is married probably not probably not uh generally i don't but um exavenzian um I'm a post-left, post-anarchist by technicality. Um, and not Twitter post-left. Like, I'm sorry. I, I don't... Any definitional set that you're going to use, if you get it from fucking Twitter morons, doesn't apply in this room. Just know that. Um, post-left is a, you know, a balanced critique, an anarchistic critique of leftist ideology. It's not a leaving of the left. It's not fucking some right-wing bullshit. It's just, you know. And then post-anarchism, long sh- long form into short, you were always an anarchist. You just didn't know it. You got brainwashed out of it. That's sort of the, the, philo- the, the existential philosophy underpinning post-anarchism. But it's a night show, and we're doing all night shows this week, so I'm not going to do a meta-ethical analysis or deep dive into the uh, the ontological ramifications of post-anarchism. Long and short, I have some critiques of the left, and fundamentally, I just think that the default setting should be anarchism, or is anarchism. Uh, so, answers to your question. Um, but we've, we really haven't been discussing any of that sort of stuff tonight. It's been mostly uh, academic inquiries into a motivational syndrome induced by cannabis and uh, fucking this, that, and the other thing. We've been, we've been all over the fu- uh, all over the place, and right now we were just discussing, you know, Tennessee being a shithole, but maybe not as a little less of a shithole. A fucking. Oh, no, 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 that, that, no worries, man, no worries, please, we're, we're used to Tokyo drifting around these parts, fucking hard left, fucking just, uh, sometimes you, you pivot, you, you, you change directions, no worries, man, um, scientific method applied to social outcomes ultimately leads to anarchism, so um, it is, wait, it is not a total shithole, yeah, it's not a total shithole, it's just mostly a shithole, <laughs> It's it's beautiful. So there's that. Dude, the smoky... I love... Dude, I love Tennessee. I lived in Tennessee for years. I love Tennessee. Fucking... I I love... I love Dolly Parton. I love Tennessee. I love the Smoky Mountains. I love the Appalachians. I love the food. I love the people. Individually, taken collectively, there's some dangerous genetics floating around that part of the country. But... Like, I, 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 I love these places. I love the South. I just hate the South. I live there. <laughs> I've seen this shit up close and personal. Like, it, you know, it's uh, a lot of, a lot of God guns and country in that part of the world. A lot of God guns and country in that part of the world. So for an anarchist, for a gay anarchist, for a, as cat would say, aggressively gay anarchist, you know, My anti-labor evangelical next-to-last employer has a property in downtown Nashville. Um, Lieutenant Aldo Rain, descended from the mountain man Jim Bridger. It means he's got a little Cherokee in him. Um, I ain't come all the way to... That's the best part of that movie. That speech is the best. That monologue given by Brad Pitt's the best part of that fucking movie. It just is. Um, did you see the conservative saying people should go to Dollywood? Uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's Dollywood, uh, instead of Disneyland due to Disney being pro LGBTQIA. Dolly's is pro gay as they come. Are they fucking, I was about to ask, are they stupid? Of course they're stupid. Dolly's fucking too. Are you kidding me? Dolly's been fucking, fucking, Jesus Christ. Queers and Dolly have been united at the hip for fucking decades. That's hilarious. Fucking, just fucking go to Dollywood. She ain't pro queer, sweetheart. Who do you think does all that hair and makeup? Yeah. 
They really didn't understand Hee Haw at all, did they? They don't understand a lot of shit. Yeah, she's more of a gay icon than Freddie Mercury. No, 100% she is. Yeah, she, dude, she's... Yeah, that's, that's fucking... She's going to Dollywood. She's not pro LGBT. <laughs> I'm all for it. Go to Dollywood. I think it's a good thing. Yeah, fuck Disney. Fuck Disney. Let's go. Everybody go to Dollywood. Fuck yeah. Dude, she supports the region. She's fucking fair uh, fair employer. She believes in labor rights. She believes in fucking... Dude, she's based as shit. Go to Dollywood. Also, it's a really nice park. I've been there plenty of times. Benjian, um, yes, no, maybe so. It depends. It depends on your school of anarchism, how you, how you feel about that. I think the, um, I'm in the no gods, no masters camp. Um, I think, I think ascribing, you, it's difficult to be an anarchist. Look, you can practice some of the anarchistic practices, right? You can do it. You can get in the trenches and do it, but you're creating or operating under the biggest hierarchy you could create. The creator of the universe, an Abrahamic deity, right? Like it, it there's some contradictions that need rectifying. I'm not saying they can't do good. I'm not saying they can't be a force for good. I'm not saying that they can't be a useful ally. I'm just saying... As an anarchist, I have some some reservations, shall we say, that if you ascribe to and operate under such a rigid hierarchy of such, that anything you do could fundamentally be co-opted pretty easily given that hierarchical structure that you operate under. And St. Francis of Assisi would probably be a, a primary example. St. Francis was based as shit didn't believe in the hierarchy, didn't believe in, like, you know, all of this rigid dogma. And then if you look at the Franciscan monks, after what the hierarchy got a hold, what, after the hierarchy got a hold of what he was doing and twisted his beliefs, Franciscan monks are some of the most rigid hierarchical group set that you have, right? Like, it, it, it just, it seems counterproductive at, at best, and it seems potentially harmful at most. I'm not saying, that, you know, like I said, I, there's, I'm not saying they can't be uh, allies. I'm not saying that they can't be forces for good. I'm just saying that, like, why don't you just go ahead and take the next step? Because as an anarchist, if you believe in a, in especially an Abrahamic deity, right? Like, if you believe in Yahweh, then you believe in the most rigid, grand hierarchy there is. You haven't actually become an anarchist. And so I, I'm in the no gods, no masters camp. I, I just am. Um, at the very, at the very best, uh, at the very least, uh, what's up, got? I'd compromise on let's redefine God. If we have a semantical discussion surrounding the word God, then I can work with it at least, right? If you've if you've taken it away from like the the rigid Abrahamic structure and all of that, and you've redefined God, and you've you know you've created this us other thing, and that's what you operate under. The God is just all of existence and creation and the essence therein, like something like that. Cool, we can work with that. No big deal. Uh, it's not atheistic, Ventian. I'm not an atheist. No. See, this is this is a thing. Because I have criticisms of uh, a, uh, of Abrahamic religions doesn't make me an atheist. I'm agnostic. I truly believe that the, you can't know. The universe is too big. Existence, creation is too large. Any human being who says they know one way or the other is full of shit. I'm agnostic about it. I truly do not know. I will never know. Yeah. And I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm actually happier that way. It's the ones that feel they know. Yeah. Yeah, non-binary. That's snappy and to the point. 
Gnosticism is a pipe dream. We don't have the processing power, says Carpe. Yeah. Car Kaiser, I'm not an atheist. I'm a nihilistic theist. Um... Fair enough, Beast. And Gemma, yeah, like, that that would be, like, some of the answer. But, like, again, we don't know. We can't know. We just can't. There's no way for us to. We can't. We can't even fathom the distance to the sun or the size of the sun. There's no way for our human cognition to truly understand these numbers in that scale. And that's just in our solar system. The, the, the size of creation is beyond us. So speculative analysis therein is, is, was, and will always be speculative at best. I'm agnostic. I don't know. I can't know. And I'm okay with that. I am, I am sort of anti-theistic. Yeah. Um, like, uh, Alex. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, the size of the planet we're on is hard enough to fathom. <laughs> Viva. Okay, okay. I heard your cries. Yeah, I admit it. It's me. It's uh, I'm him. Him is me. Me is it. Viva, I have some patch notes then. Um... Yes, Viva, if you truly are the one divine creator, I have some patch notes that need, uh, I've got some bug fixes that need pushing. So get on it. Yeah, if God exists, I think it's even less than that. But yeah, if God exists, they're as unknowable and incomprehensible as we are to dust mites. Nightmares. I'm a devout agnostic myself. Yep. The books were written down when I was drunk. Sorry, y'all, says Viva. <laughs> I'm an anti-theist, but if the choir of angels meets me at the pearly gates upon my death, I will be highly surprised, says Gemma. I also, I've got an argument for God. Like, if 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 all of it's if all of it is true. And I'm going to fucking stand before St. Peter and be judged. I got words. I got criticisms. I got some fucking shit. I, I, I got built up. Like, I can actually say, like, I'm sorry, you gave me free will. And then you put a bunch of fucking competing bullshit on this earth. And all of the competing bullshit is run by assholes who are constantly raping and murdering and fucking diddling kids. And you expected me to fucking figure out which one of these fuck nuts was actually speaking the truth. You poisoned the well so badly that we're all just drinking toxic water down there. And now you're going to stand there in judgment of me. By the way, what's with the fucking pediatric cancer? Children, babies, innocent babies get fucking cancer and die. You're going to judge me. Okay, sure. Pull the fucking trap door. I'm happy. Send me to hell. My dad called himself an agnostic egalitarian. I can't argue with that. No, that's that's a good one. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, I know. No, Marcus, yes. I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen it. Of course I've seen it. Fucking Stephen Fry versus God. Of course I've seen it. Are you kidding me? Suppose what Oscar believed in as he died, in spite of your protestations, suppose it's all true, mm. and you walk up to the pearly gates and you are confronted by God. What will Stephen Fry say to him, her, or it? I will basically, what's known as the Odyssey, I think, I, I'll say bone cancer in children? What's that about? How dare you? How dare you create a world in which there is such misery that is not our fault? It's not right. It's utterly, utterly evil. Why should I respect a capricious, mean-minded, stupid God who creates a world which is so full of injustice and pain? That's what I'd say. And you think you're going to get in no, on that? No, but I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to get in on his terms. They're wrong. Now, if I died and it was, it was Pluto, Hades, and if it was the 12 Greek gods, then I would have more truck with it because the Greeks were 
they didn't pretend not to be human in their appetites and in their capriciousness. Oh yeah, and in their Dude, unreasonableness. This, they didn't from what I understand, the, the the interviewer here is fucking Irish Catholic. He's 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 Stephen Fry basically just spit in his face. Yeah, like he's yeah he's super uncomfortable with this answer. Themselves as being all capriciousness and in their unreasonableness. They didn't present themselves as being all-seeing, all-wise, all-kind, all-beneficent. Because the God who created this universe, if it was created by God, is quite clearly a maniac. Utter maniac. Totally selfish. Total we have to spend our life on our knees thanking him? What kind of God would do that? Yes, the world is very splendid, but it also has in it insects whose whole life cycle is to burrow into the eyes of children and make them blind. They eat outwards from the eyes. Why? Why did you do that to us? You could easily have made a, a creation him. in which that didn't Fucking exist. destroyed him. It is simply not acceptable. So, you know, atheism is not just about not believing there is a, is not believing there's a God. Good to know, Alex. On the assumption Gabriel. there is one, what kind of God is he? It's perfectly apparent that he is monstrous utterly monstrous and deserves no respect whatsoever. The moment you banish him, your life becomes simpler, purer, cleaner, more worth living, in my opinion. That <laughs> sure is the longest answer to that question that I ever got in this entire series. <laughs> oh, I love, I love fucking, you know, yeah. Fucking absolutely destroyed him. Like, to fucking just destroy the motherfucker. Atheists are happier. Yeah, dude, snappy. Dude, atheists and agnostics are just happier people usually. The, the only time we're annoyed is when we have to put up with fucking moron believers who are constantly banging on that they... Und dude, they... I know God's name. Okay, it's, this is this is the insanity of, a, of, a, of an Abrahamic believer. Also the Hindus as well and a whole other host of fucking geniuses. Not only do you know the nature of existence, you know God's name. That's insane. That's insane. That's not stable behavior. That, that's, that's not the, the workings of a sane mind. That you're like, oh yeah, no, I know, I know. I know the nature of all of creation and I can tell you the, the dude who created its name. I'm sorry, what? Does he speak to you? Do you do you, do you, do you have long conversations with this with this this God? Because I need to know. Because I'm not feeling safe in the same room with you. <laughs> is he is he in the room with us right now? Yeah. Like, dude, that's that's some that's some crazy shit. We should read some different holy texts sometimes, is this Kaiser? Yeah, I mean we've got a lot of fucking reading. Next week we'll start the reading back up, Kaiser. Oh, uh, next week we'll start the You've been trying dude sight was it? Yeah, sight out. You've been trying to get a rise out of me this entire time, homie. The, ch the Catholic Church has sexually abused untold amounts of children. You're going to start throwing around sexual abuser at me? Homie. Religious folk have been raping kids since time in memoriam. And not just the Catholics. All aspects of this do it. Pastors and all across the U.S. get caught all the time. I think you're projecting. I think it struck a little close to home. I think maybe there's a little self-analysis that needs to go on there. Me doth think she protests too much. Why do you think they made a secret organization? I know, right? Diddly do. Diddly do. Um, trauma defense mechanism. You're going to use your trauma defense mechanism to act like nothing bothers you. 
things bother me. You just don't. You sincerely, do you think that you're the first person to like come in here and try and be like, you're a fucking child abuser. Like, do you think this is the first time I've encountered this? <laughs> it's not even a new troll tactic. Like, homie, you're not even original. Why would it bother me? Like, get. I don't diddle kids. You know who does? Republicans. Republicans diddle kids. I've got a list. We keep a list. We actually keep a list. We call it the gross old pedos list. We just keep a list of fucking conservative, social conservatives and Republicans who fuck kids. Yeah. Happens all the time. Should we start reading the list? Because the list takes a long while to read. Yeah. Yeah, the gross old pedos list. Yeah, it's, it's generally uh, what we find in society is that the more socially conservative you are, the more likely you are to be a pedophile. So go ahead and go ahead, Saito. Show us how, uh, how socially conservative you are. All we're going to interpret that as is psychological projection. And we have the list to show it. So, pookie. I'm not some defenseless schoolgirl. I'm almost 40, man. I've been dealing with the likes of people like you for ages. You mean nothing to me. You will mean nothing to me after this stream. You will mean nothing to me tomorrow. But hey. Ah, uh, let's see. So let's do the list. Let's start doing the list. Let's see. Um, former Oklahoma State Senator Trump's Oklahoma campaign chair, Ralph Shorty, he pled guilty to child sex trafficking. We got Republican Speaker of the Den uh, House, Dennis Hassert. He, of course, you know, was diddling four boys as young as 14. Republican Tim Nolan, chairman of Donald Trump's presidential campaign in Kentucky, child sex, tra sex trafficking. Um, fuck a Republican State Senator Ralph Shorty he was uh, uh, indicted on four counts of human trafficking and child pornography. He also pleaded guilty to an additional Count of child sex trafficking in exchange for dropping one of the other charges. Republican Minnesota uh, Minnesota State Representative drops out of the race after his daughter says he had been molesting her for more than ten years. Republican anti-abortion activist Howard Scott Hel uh, Heldreth. He's a convicted child rapist in Florida. Uh, Republican County Commissioner David Schwartz pleaded guilty to molesting two girls under the age of 11. Um, that's always a good look. Republican Judge Mark Pazohanich, um, either way, pleaded guilty to no contest to fondling a 10-year-old girl. A Republican legislator Edison Mislo Alandaro sentenced to 10 years in prison for raping his daughter between the ages of 9 and 17. Fun times. Uh, Republican Mayor Philip Giordano serving 37-year sentence in federal prison for sexually abusing an 8- and 10-year-old girls. Uh, Republican consultant, uh, campaign consultant Tom Shortridge sentenced to three years for taking nude photographs of a 15-year-old girl. Republican Senator Strom Thurmond, notable racist, by the way, had sex with a 15-year-old black girl, which produced a child. <clears throat> Republican pastor Mike Hintz, whom um, George W. Bush commended during the 2004 presidential campaign, uh, he surrendered to police after admitting to a sexual affair with a under, <clears throat> under 14. Republican legislator Peter Dibble pleaded no contest to having an inappropriate relationship with a 13-year-old girl. Uh, Republican Congressman Donald Buzz Lutkins was found guilty of having sex with a female minor. Oh, Republican fundraiser Richard A. Delgadio was uh, found guilty of child porn charges um, and paying two teenage girls to pose for sexual photographs. Republican activist Mark A. Grethen convicted on six counts of sex crimes involving children. Republican activist Randall Day uh, uh, Ankeny pleaded guilty to attempted sexual assault on a child. <clears throat> Fucking, let's see. Republican Congressman Dan Crane had sex with a female minor working as a congressional page. Republican activist and Christian coalition leader Beverly Russell admitted to an incestuous relationship with his stepdaughter. Republican Congressman uh, and anti-gay activist Robert Bauman was charged with having sex with a 16-year-old boy he picked up at a gay bar. <clears throat> Republican committee chairman Jeffrey Patty was arrested for distributing a video clip of a five-year-old being raped. Republican activist Marty Glickman, a.k.a. Republican Marty, uh, he was taken into custody by Florida police on four counts of unlawful sexual activity with an underage girl and one count of delivering the drug LSD. 
Republican legislative aide Howard L. Brooks charged with molesting a 12-year-old boy and possessing child pornography. Oh, we're not even at the second. We're not even like close to the second part of the list, by the way. Republican Senate candidate John Hathaway was accused of having sex with a 12-year-old b- babysitter and withdrew his candidacy after the allegations were widely reported in the media. Republican preacher Stephen White demanded a return to traditional family values, sentenced to jail after offering $20 to a 14-year-old boy for permission to perform oral sex on him. Republican talk show host John Matthews pleaded guilty to exposing his genitals to an 11-year-old girl. Republican anti-gay activist Earl Butch Kimmerling was sentenced to 40 years in prison for molesting an eight-year-old girl after he attempted to stop a gay couple from adopting her. Republican Party leader Paul Ingram uh, pleaded guilty to six counts of raping his daughters and served 14 years in prison. Republican election board official Kevin Cohen was sentenced to two years probation for soliciting sex over the internet from a 14-year-old girl. Republican politician Andrew Burr was charged with two counts of first-degree sodomy with a 13-year-old boy. Republican politician Keith Westmoreland was arrested on seven felony counts of lewd and lascivious exhibition to girls under the age of 16, i.e. exposing himself to children. Republican anti-abortion activist John Allen Burt charged with sexual misconduct involving a 15-year-old girl if you're curious if it matters to you republican county councilman keola childs pleaded guilty to molesting a male child republican activist john butler was charged with a criminal sexual assault on a teenage girl republican candidate uh, richard gardner attempted uh, admitted to molesting his two own daughters republican county commissioner merrill robert barter pleaded guilty to unlawful sexual contact and assault on a teenage boy Republican City Councilman uh, Fred C. Smeltzer Jr. pleaded no contest to raping a 15-year-old girl. He only got six months in prison for that, by the way. Um, Republican activist Parker J. Bena uh, pleaded guilty to possession of child pornography on his home computer, was sentenced to 30 months in federal prison and fined $18,000. Republican parole board officer and former, uh, former Colorado State Representative Larry Jack Schwartz was fired after child pornography was found in his possession. <clears throat> Republican strategist and Citadel Military College graduate Robin Vanderwall was convicted in Virginia on five counts of soliciting sex from boys and girls over the internet. Republican city councilman Mark Harris, who were described as a good military man and a church goer, was convicted of repeatedly having sex with an 11-year-old girl and sentenced to 12 years in prison for it. Republican businessman John Grunseth withdrew his candidacy for Minnesota governor after it surfaced that he went swimming in the nude with four underage girls, you know, as you do. It's a common thing, right? Republican director of the Young Republican Federation, Nicholas Elizondo, molested his six-year-old daughter. He was sentenced to six years in prison for molesting his six-year-old daughter. That seems that seems like a balanced, <clears throat> fair one. Um, let's see. Oh, sorry, I got to scroll. Um, Republican benefactor of conservative Christian groups, Richard A. Dassin Sr. was charged with rape for allegedly paying a 15-year-old girl for sex. He was 62, married with grown children and several grandchildren. He also told the police that over the past decade, he paid more than $1 million to have sex with a large number of children. Should we, I mean, should we keep going? Uh, Ventian, it always amazes me. Small government conservatives can, um, can claim to support Republicans. When was the last time they talked about actually reducing the deficit? They cut welfare by 3%, increased military spending by 9%. Because they, they don't care about it, Ventian. You know that. They're just talking out of their asses. They're not small government conservatives. That's not what they're about. Conservative sexual assault line go up. Yeah. Dude. Social conservatism leads to out, uh, outright perverse behavior sets um, or maladjusted per, uh, behavior sets such as child molestation. It does. That's why you have so much fucking uh, child rape and child marriage in small um, religious com- uh, collectives such as like, you know, um, uh, fundamental Mormonism, small Catholic enclaves, uh, Orthodox Judaism, that sort of thing. Yeah, it's commonly studied. It's not that... It's not that, um, it's not an esoteric uh, abhorrent uh, behavior set. Like we know what it is. We know where it derives from and we can track it to with a certain degree of predictability at this point. 
if you take a, a, a group of these individuals and you sequester small children around them and you give them, uh, if you structure their power structure and a rigid hierarchical power structure and you create a social, uh, a socially conservative, uh, sexually, a uh, abstinent, um, social structure around them, generally what happens is aberrant sexual behaviors pop up and they start molesting children. You end up with children being married off at the age of 8 to 12, like in Tennessee, where they were attempting to remove the age of consent for child marriage. They were just trying to do that. They got fucking lambasted on a national scale, so they had to they had to fucking dial that one back. But Tennessee was just trying to make it legal to marry 12-year-olds. Oh, by the way, the guy who wrote the bill, um, he's got a child bride that he groomed. Oh, and if we're wondering what social, uh, what uh, political alignment he has, he'd be a Republican too. Um, I don't know who this person is. Who is who is Nadim Zawi, non-binary? Who is Nadim Zawi? Don't know who that is. Oh, it's the education secretary. Okay, it's the UK Education Secretary. Okay, okay, okay. I see it. I see it. I see it. So the the UK educational uh, the educational secretary for the UK, Nadim Zawa, says, "Eh, we should we should just trust parents on whether or not they can beat their kids." Yeah, that's definitely. Uh, first off, Ken. Um, we recognize science as the guiding principle. Um, so 25 is the age of consent as far as we're concerned around these parts. But as for how it would be enforced, that is a, um, that is a, uh, the individual and the society both has the right to self-defense. So if you violate the autonomy of an individual, then both that individual and the social group have a methodology to restrain. We would use a restorative justice process um, rather than a uh, punitive justice process. But we would restrain the individual. Yes. We would we would stop that. Oh, Pookie. Hey Saito, you wanna come on the air and have a conversation? <clears throat> come on. Come on. Come on the air, have a conversation. I can't wait to speak to you. I'm sure you're. I'm sure you're a, a, a man of uh, of your uh, of your principles, and you will speak your part, right? Come on, you're not just some cowardly keyboard warrior, are you? Get on the air. Just as you can defend an individual being mugged in the street, you can defend a uh, defended child in an abusive relationship. Yep. Yeah, and no, I'm not joking. By the way, when I say 25. The uh, front, uh, the prefrontal cortex development that is responsible for exe higher executive function, such as uh, long-term planning, is not done developing, uh, developing until a minimum age of generally 25. It can go as high as 28. But generally speaking, uh, the way I reference that in um, uh, is just the age of 25. Fundamentally, I do not believe um, in proper consent under the age of 25 for people who are over the age of 25. I think you can rubber band a lot of things. A 25 year old wants to bang an 18 year old, whatever it is, what it is. But when I see a 45 year old with a 18 year old, yeah, no, that's creepy. It's fucking creepy. That's a child. Like there's no way I can't look at a fucking 18 year old and go, I'm cl that an 18 year old is closer to diapers than my age. Okay. That's fucking weird. That's weird. Like, I have nothing to even say to an 18-year-old, right? Like, what's that conversation like? Ugh. Nah. Nah, I'm good. I big disagree with Kai until I turn 25 as his Kaiser. Uh... All you say to a guy like that is, okay, groomer, says Carpe. Yeah. Okay, groomer. I don't even know what you're talking about anymore. 
you just now you're just mindlessly rambling dude are you are you drunk have you not slept or it's just the capitalist modality of operation really ground you into the into the fucking dust and you're like dude my fucking boss is just a fu- oh fucking i'm put on i'm coerced i'm oppressed i'm gonna fucking take my shit out on i'm just gonna ah, ah. sounds like a meth rant to me I mean, you know, it is America. I don't know if he's American or not, but America definitely has a meth problem. So it could be, Caleb. It definitely could be. But, I mean, he stopped making sense a while ago. But, I mean, this is that. I mean, that last sentence doesn't even. Yeah. Um. Age of the older partner divided by two plus seven. It is a solid rule of thumb to work off of. It is a solid work of thumb. Maybe a 16 year old riddle and rant. Well, I mean, if he's 16, he can't be here. We got to ban him out, right? We don't tolerate anybody under the age of 18 in this community. <laughs> is it a meth problem or a meth solution? <laughs> oh, I mean, it's fucking, I suppose, right? Oh, this motherfucker's got a brand new account, too. I didn't even notice. I haven't even, I haven't even popped his fucking account. He's got a brand... Fucking March 19th of this year. It's literally just an idiot troll. He's just not good at it. Anyway. um, Let's see. What else? <laughs> the final meth solution. Oh, a few people went there. Well, you only get the right solution with the right meth. <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, yeah, a few people went for went for the Hitler jab. It is what it is. I said, I like next week we'll be talking to, like something will come up and I'll be like, who is that guy? <laughs> Every hey Hoffman, every troll has to start somewhere. I know, right? I mean, you know, the dark tetrad, uh, tetrad of uh, personality disorders speaks to trolls as individuals, right? Um, what is it? Psychopathy, sociopathy, narcissism, and um, Machiavellianism. Um, a Canadian study looked into um, self-admitted internet trolls and they found overwhelmingly 97% male but there was a disproportionate preponderance of um, the dark uh, the dark tetrad yeah and it was it's Machiavellianism sociopathy psychopathy and narcissism um, they have a disproportionate outlay of those person uh, pathological personality traits and so, like, you know, what do you want from an inner, if you, if you encounter an actual online troll, not just somebody who's like, you know, I'm doing a bit of trolling, right? An actual internet troll, like whatever this motherfucker is. Again, I don't even remember his fucking name already. Um, what you end up with is somebody with a deeply disturbed personality set. And so, like, what are, you're dealing with a mentally ill person. Truly. Like, so what are, what are you going to do? You're going to have a rational, reasoned conversation with that? You're going to have you bust out, what, academic studies? You're going to, what, try and try and have an, an emotive, empathetic dialectic with them? It's impossible. They're incapable of it. All they will do is put up gaslit barriers and attempt to pivot and attempt to deflect. And it's just, dude, there's nothing to do there. They're just attempting to get an emotive rise out of you because that's how they, that's how they get their, um, their sort of emotional capital for themselves. That's where they get their energy from. They're, they're sort of emotional vampires, uh, vampires of sorts, right? That's fundamentally the, the narcissism element of it. That's what they're driving it from. And so it's, it's a malformed personality set. Generally, it, uh, spe- uh, attention equals win, says Carpe. Yeah, generally speaking, what it is is uh, a sort of um, emotional and psychological retardation of development, generally around the ages of 13 to 15, especially for a male. They, they tend not to age out of their early teenage years. It's depressing, but it is what it is, right? Like, <laughs> these people exist, you know. 
So we all deal with them. So they, they, they lash out. They fucking, you know, it's, it's very much, it's very ego driven. Uh, despite, uh, despite the fact that they generally are, they tend to focus on others, but it is in an attempt to gain uh, social capital for themselves. It is about them. They, they're attempting to get you, they're trying to destabilize your emotional position so that you will feed into that loop of theirs. It's sad. It's, I mean, it's pathetic on a fundamental level. But, you know, as, as a neurotypical person, like, right, as somebody who has a, like a functional emotional set attached to their psychology, you have to have just a certain level of sympathy and empathy for them, right? Like, I get it. I get it. I, I, I wouldn't want that, especially for myself, right? I wouldn't want that for anyone. It's got to make, it's got to make for a lonely existence. It's got to make for a lonely existence, never allowing anybody close, never, let alone allowing, no one ever actually getting close, no, no one ever wanting to get close because you're such a, you know, an abhorrent, malignant personality type that it's not fun to be around you. It's not nice to be around somebody who's, you know, that level of, again, malignant personality. So it's got to be a lonely, sad existence to a certain extent. And that's, as an anarchist, right? As, you know, somebody who is fundamentally an idealist and somebody who is, you know, who wants better for society. It, it is a failing of the mental health care systems as well, by the way. Of course, it's it's a failure of the educational system to fail to recognize that early on in life It's a, and divert it to where it needs to be. It's a failure of the mental health system. And of course, it's a capitalist modality that speaks to that. Because let's face it, we, you know, our healthcare system is for profit in this country. Given his linguistic set, he's at least native English speaker, probably. So it's just depressing. It's just depressing. I, I wish him the best. Um, being emotionally vulnerable with friends is awesome. Yeah. Um, Basic manipulative abuser tactics as beast. Yeah, it's 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 never the tactics never rise to any skillful level because they don't have an understanding of uh, normative psychology, right? Like uh, all a troll has, so all they have, all a troll has, is trying to shake you emotionally. They're trying to get a rise out of you. They want that mm, from you. That's it. It's all they have. They're a one-trick pony. They always are, and they always will be. They don't have the the depth of character or the understanding of normative psychology because they just don't have it. Right? There's there's no lived experience there. So, like, it's really easy to just not be affected by this shit. Anyway, um, speaking of normative psychology. Um, the Japanese TV anchor, um, was, uh, Yumiko Matsuo, um, dude, I mean, Japanese newscasters pride themselves, like Japanese people, uh, like alone, um, uh, pride themselves on that sort of like, you know, collected, um, emotional nature, right? There's sort of staunch, stiff upper lip, as <clears throat> the Brits would say. Um, dude, Yumiko fucking when she had just covered some of the atrocities in uh, Buka and like shown clips of like the, the children hiding in the bunker in Maripol and stuff like that. And she just done a bunch of that stuff. And she, she, the, the next clip up was a clip of Putin bestowing honors on the brigade that more off, more likely than not committed the atrocities in Buka. This is a Japanese primary. This is a Japanese news anchor. She starts crying. She starts crying. It's 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 like sincerely one of those moments that you're like, holy shit, man. Like that's some real shit. Like for a Japanese news anchor, they take that shit seriously. They take that shit seriously. Um, 
hit me with that emotion stick. Uh, here. Good honor. Good honor. Just a human being. Just a human being. CNN などによりますとロシアのプーチン大統領が18日多数の民間人の遺体が見つかったウクライナのブチャで活動したロシア軍の部隊に対し名誉称号を授与したということですプーチン大統領はこの部隊について偉大な英雄的行動と勇気を祝福し特別軍事作戦の手本となるような存在だとして称えています VTR でもお伝えしました製鉄所に未だに市民の方が多く残っていますごめんなさい失礼しました、えー、そんな中でごめんなさいちょっとさっきの重要なニュースがちょっと悔しい思いで読んでしまいました、えー、すいません冷静さを保ちますウクライナ東部での戦闘が新たな局面に入ったと言いますここからは安全保障軍事戦略がお専門の防衛研究所高橋杉雄さんに解説をいただきますよろしくお願いいたしますよろしくお願いします It's a woman who professionally prides herself. It's a woman who culturally and professionally prides himself on maintaining emotional composure. And after reading that Putin awarded that battalion, because she had just covered the Buka stuff, and after reading that Putin awarded them honors, yeah, even she couldn't hold it. No, it, it may actually be the first time a Japanese anchor actually break, broke. Like, it's, it's a big, like, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's kind of a fascinating look at what normal people react like, right? Like, that's, that's it's, it's a peek behind the mask. I, 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 I yeah. And do Japanese, Japanese news? God punk, take care of yourself. Good luck at work.、Um, Japanese news prides itself on that sort of like composure, right? News with a Japanese fucking bias. But news, right? Yeah, she broke. She fucking broke. <sighs> I, like, I like moments like that. It, it shows the humanity. It shows the humanity. I, I like it when that sort of thing, like, can, we can have a moment like that collectively. That, and that's the, the beauty of this sort of、like、global internet culture is we can share that moment. We can share in that moment. And so we can, we can see the human side of this stalwart professional. Because I have no doubt that woman is a goddamn. Stone cold fucking professional at her job. Dude, that's a fucking female news anchor in Japan. With a, apparently, that is one of the bigger shows, by the way, too. Like, that's like the big boy of fucking news. And fucking, like, she had a moment of humanity. I respect it. Hey, <laughs> Jay Miles, there's no bias in the news. Uh, 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 no, 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 Kaiser, Kaiser, you're falling. For... Jay Miles just says, no, he's fucking with you. He's fucking with you. Hey, Jay Miles, no one ever picks it up, man. I'm the only one that fucking ever knows. I'm the only one that ever knows. You get one every fucking time you do it, you get one every time you do it. Uh, do they have mental, cover mental coverage there? I would want some after that. Yeah, I know, right?、Uh, <laughs> oh, every fucking time. <laughs>、uh, see, this is how you troll. Yeah, J, J. Miles understands it. Yeah.、Uh, the only place that has honest news is the DPRK. Exactly. Exactly. 100%. Um. Oh, yeah,、uh, Beast. Yeah, 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 yeah.、Um, I'll get you.、Um, 
Yeah, beast, 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 beast. Uh, uh, I saw your post on Discord. Hold on, let me get you a let me get you a thing. I can I I I have a recommendation for that beast. Oh Jesus Christ! If I can spell. Um. Okay, here we go. Uh, if you want a testimonial on um, Beast, um, they're the same people that make my mattress. Um, but um, Caboose uses one of their toppers as well, and he uh, he loves it too. Um, link is right below your question on the Discord server, Beast. Yeah. Dude, I, I love their fucking mattresses. Um, oh, yeah, for two. So yeah, I mean, the Japanese have uh, have a lot to apologize to, to mea culpa for, as it were, for sure. The news is very trustworthy and definitely not serving the corporatists in war machine interests. Oh, I mean, invention. Of course not. I don't know what you're talking about. It's not like there's one giant corporate, uh, um, like shit, uh, fuck pile, right? <laughs> They're just all, just all one constant or abor a of fucking a holes and dicks. Just fucking absolutely fucking us over. Holy fuck. Those toppers are affordable. Yeah, dude, the mattresses are affordable. Go check the fucking mattress section. Dude, this is we're we're talking top shelf fucking product. You can get a uh, a, a twin for like seven hundred bucks. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I I honestly I love my mattress. Yeah. So, yeah. If anybody everybody needs a mattress, like that's what's happening in the commons right now. It's a little discussion about that. Yeah, seven hundred. Yeah, dude, dude, they're super affordable, and it's the best goddamn products in the world. Like it's they're certified so clean and so organic and so well produced and like it, it's yeah yeah I I can't recommend them enough so if you wanna if you, if you need that a couple of brothers out of Chicago um yeah that's that's who started the company um, the latex comes from a, a sustainable um, organic farm in Sri Lanka. The wool comes from organic sheep in um, New Zealand. And the cotton, I believe, is U.S. grown organic cotton. And those are the only three ingredients in the goddamn mattress. And they're naturally um, flame resistant because it's natural latex foam. It just doesn't burn. So you don't need VOCs. You don't need flame retardants. You don't need any of that shit. There's only three ingredients in the fucking mattress. It's amazing. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I, Caboose uses them, um, for, um, like I said, a topper. So if you, you want to direct, you want to talk to Caboose about it and Caboose is like the hot sleep issues as well. Um, cool. I'm sleeping on two blankets and a towel at the moment. Oof. Uh, that's rough. I'm putting together. It's very anarchist though. Um, I'm putting together a collection of books for inspiration for the project we were talking about last night to just get the mutual aid spirit. Nice, Kaiser. Uh, if it's a digital collection, let me know. We can... Um, uh, we can... <laughs> Viva. Uh, we, can, uh, we can put something together. Viva. Oh... <laughs> uh, Oh, I don't. Dude, fuck the Prims. Vention? Sorry. Fuck the Prims. They're anarchists. I'm not going to do some, like, no true Scotsman on them. They're anarchists. I just... Fuck the Prims. Dude, the primitivists are genocidal maniacs. Fuck those guys. <laughs> uh, yeah. Kaiser, no worries. Just get a get a titles list. Get a titles list. Um, Get a titles list going, and we can, you know, we can arrange it otherwise. Of course, you know, only ISBN numbers and sh that sort of thing, so people can obtain their own perfectly legal physical copies. Um, hashtag legal. 
Um, but yeah, 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 get a list together. Other people may be interested. Uh, what do we got? Memes. <laughs> oh. Oh, is that what it was in reference to? I didn't even notice. Oh, okay. I I did fucking cupcake. I just I I didn't even see it. I didn't even fucking see it. <laughs> oh, imagine being so small. Oh, for sure, Ventian. For sure. See, Ventian, the, the, I don't even hit him with the anarchist stuff. I hit him with Smithian ep economics on that stuff. Dude, Adam Smith, the father of capitalism, was a wholesale against the rentier class. Whole cloth. Called him parasites and shit. Dude, yeah. Even when, when the father of capitalism is like, fuck your copyright. Fuck your landlord shit. Right? The father of capitalism hated landlords and didn't believe in fucking all this rentier class bullshit. Right? I don't even need to hit him with some like leftist theory. I can just pull out the fucking Smithian economics. The daddy of capitalism doesn't even believe in this shit. The fuck? I, get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Yeah. It's so small that Prince Albert looks like a hood ring. Ah. <laughs> uh, Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, Ventian. That's, I don't even bother with leftist theory when I do like IP and stuff like that. I just go to Smithian economics. Dude, Adam Smith himself hated them. Like you're on the losing team. <laughs> yeah, it's just, fucking, it's just is what it is. It's a fucking joke. It's a fucking joke, man. It's fucking hilarious. Oh, uh, fucking A. Um, uh, beast, beast, apropos of, apropos of nothing. So I got the larger ring put in for the, for the, for my PA, right? Just good luck. For those of you who don't know if you're new around here. Yeah. Like, um, hi, we're DGENs. Um, so I got my fucking, uh, I got the larger ring put in, but I've, I'm wearing the other ring to add some weight to it to, you know, help stretch a little faster. So I've got the fucking dangly fucking ring on it now. <laughs> anyway, beast is one of our body mod people. He, they get it. They get it. Um, yeah. <laughs> you got a bell, you got a bell for your production assistant. Basically it does, it does a little, do a little dangle. Well, <laughs> oh, fucking a, but yeah, I want to speed up the fucking, um, the stretch for it. I want to get, I want to get to the next size. So. Yeah, I was like a little extra weight. I've got the I've got the uh, the implant steel piercings coming, so uh, the implant uh, implant stainless steel. So those weigh a little more anyway, rather than the titanium. So I'm gonna go get it. I'm gonna go swap it right, um, and go with the stain. Uh, go with not stainless, but implant steel, right? Uh, so a little extra weight on that, and then I'll dangle something off of that one. <laughs> Uh, what's it like to jog or run with one? Uh, Exol. It, it, it adds some, okay. So like it, it, what happens when you take a stick and you add a weight at the end of the stick, it becomes a pendulum. Um, so yeah, it, it fucking flaps around even more. So yeah, more or less what I figured. Yeah. It's basic physics, man. Anybody with a little common sense, a little knowledge of the physical world, you'd be like, eh, I'm pretty sure that's going to turn into a pendulum. It's exactly what it does. Yeah, it smacks around a bunch more. So you got to wear a jock strap. No big deal. You should be wearing one anyway. <laughs> it did. No, no, no. Vention. No, yeah. The labor theory of value. When people... Um, Hey, devil, what's up? When people like oh, the fucking Marx, that's Marxism. No, the labor theory of value is Smith. Marx has a take on the labor theory of value. 
he has an evolution of. But the labor theory of value is Smithian economics. It's the father of capitalism. It's the wealth of nations. You're right. No, it's 100%. Yeah, labor theory of value is Smith, not Marx. Though Marx has his version. Yeah, it's... Dude, it, we, we've got... We, we got a... Um, Jesus Christ. Um... Oh, I've seen this. I'm pretty sure I've seen this. Um, we've got a uh, 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 fucking Ventium. We've got um, we've got a, a, a dude in community who's got dual degrees in economics and finance, um, and he's in Ansin. And he the the amount of lament in his his, his world for like he's like dude nobody understands anything. He's like none of the dude. This is a guy who like literally like uh, um Swede Irish Swede. He um when he was here in Vegas, we were, I was visiting him in his hotel. He's like, yeah, I was downstairs with hanging out with four billionaires. That's just that's an average day, dude. If Swede has said like, if you gave me two hundred and fifty million dollars to invest, I wouldn't even know what to do with it. And that's not because it's a high number; it's because it's a low number. This is a dude who is the risk management specialist for a private equity firm that is, he handles billions, right? He wouldn't even know what to do with your millions, right? He laments constantly. He's like, none of these fuckers understand any of this stuff. He's like, the capitalists don't understand it. The communists don't understand it. He's like, nobody understands this, th these topics, Yeah, might as well be dealing with penny stocks at that point. Yeah, he legitimately, like, he's told me that before. He's like, I wouldn't know what to do with $250 million. He op Swede operates in a whole other stratosphere. Like, whole other strata. Swede's, yeah. Like, he's big dick when it comes to talking about economics and finance. Um, And so, yeah, it, it is... It's interesting, but yeah, no, he, he's many a times. He's like, dude, I've talked to billionaires and they have no idea what the basis of capital. He's just, they don't even know what capitalism is. So wait, you saying Smith and Ricardo knew about labor <laughs> devil? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 250 million. You mean 0. 0.000025 on my charts. Yeah, basically, Aspen. Yeah, that's basically how Swede rolls. I mean, you seen how, like, dude, those those tall, skinny white dudes, they tend to be swinging lumber. Just saying. I haven't seen it. I ain't seen it. But it wouldn't surprise me. Um... Yeah, Ventian, um, hang out. Um, does his dick tick? Uh, <laughs> if, can you feel the tick? If you fucking, I don't know. Fucking, we should talk about Swede like this when he's not here. If you were blowing Swede, can you fucking can you feel the tick from his from his heart valve? <laughs> um. Poor Swede. Uh, no, they aren't, and we can't... Uh, hang on. Let me get him an invite. Let me get him an invite. Um, one use. Generate a link. Copy it. Um, Ventian, I'm sending you... Uh, I'm gonna v fucking send you a whisper with a Discord invite. We recently closed our... Uh, we normally just do an exclamation discord for you but we closed it for some reasons um you know reasons happen opsecs and uh, opsec and shit like that um let's see where are you Ventian. there we go whisper got it discord link there you go check your whispers my mom um love you sweet in case you're lurking the stuff sweet talked about was enough when he was here yeah you know He's he's shared enough that we know we know. Uh yeah, Ventian, I sent you I sent you a Discord invite if you're interested. Um, let's see.
Cool, cool, close that, close that. Um, I, let's see. Oh, shit. All right, hang on. Sorry, just kind of. There we go. Kind of fucked up a thing here. Fucked up my layout. My OBS layout, that's all. Dragged when I should have shouldn't have dragged. Oh, oh, no, then no, you're sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, <laughs> I, dude, I don't want to be a huge dick, but I mean, yeah, dude, no, uh, fucking and caps aren't anarchists. You're not an anarchist. Capitalism is not compatible with anarchism. I have 52 videos and 12 hours of content on YouTube doing philosophical, logistical, uh, political, uh, poli-sci level analysis of why right libertarianism and so-called anarcho-capitalism is not anarchism. You're a nice enough dude, and I'd love to convert you away from capitalism. That, you know, you seem amicable enough, but ANCAPs aren't they're not anarchists. So. Rip. Yeah. <laughs> I, I too believe in relations between anarchists, but I don't consider capitalists anarchists. And there's a multitude of reasons why. Dating back to von Mises, dating to Hayek, up through Rothbard, even Nozick, and then God help us if we start talking about Hans Hermann Hoppe. I've done I've done a fair play analysis of this shit. It's not anarchism. You can't you can't square capitalism and anarchism. It's not doable. Capitalism can't exist without the state enforcing private property. No, they, they'll create an airsat status structure even like in the absence of a state. It's a default setting. Um, and if you analyze the conversion from mercantilism over to um, industrial capitalism, what you find is that the status structure was in inherently necessary for that conversion to even take place. There's just no way around that. So, yeah. I mean, Viva, I mean, truly, yeah. Yeah, except that's the foundation of your ancapism. So-called ancapism. Rothbard was a bad faith actor from the word go. He admitted that himself. And God help you if you're a Hoppian. Because Hoppe is just a fucking ethno-nationalist fascist. Dude, the shit that falls out of Hoppe's mouth is fucking psychotic. You shouldn't... The Europeans shouldn't let the uh, the African immigrants in because they'll lower the collective IQ of the gene pool. Mm, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. There's no, there's no like, foundational, like, you know, how do you get around, around the Lockean proviso issue? Like, how do you get around... <laughs> like, what is... What, what counts as... Um, as uh, 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 trans a transformational labor. Like, it, it's just, there's so many problems with it from a philosophical point of view. Like, it, it doesn't, it doesn't met the, uh, the analysis or the sub analysis even. Um, but you are, you're way more chill. You're way more chill. Like you as a person, Ventian, I got no issues with, but I got a real bone to pick with an so-called ANCAPs. Because y'all do a disservice to anarchism, and it's 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 a thing, it's a thing. We there is there is no portion of the anarchist milieu on a global scale that accepts capitalists as anarchists. None. There's just none. It's only this subset of right libertarianism 
that believes they can be anarchist and capitalist at the same time, which shows a misunderstanding of status structures and the necessity of the state for capitalist modalities of operation. It also fails to understand how libertarian rule, uh, co- uh, libertarian conducts, uh, codes of conduct essentially uh, end up in um, de facto monopolization. But, you know, so it is, you know, it is what it is. I, I Dude, we should have these conversations further. Ventian, let's, let's have, let's have. Oh, he's not. He's a Hoppian. Ventian, Ventian. Scott's a Hoppian. Just so you know. He's a self-described Hoppian. He 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 follows he, he follows Hans Hermann Hoppe. You know the guy who doesn't believe uh, that gay people can be rational actors in an economy, and also believes black people are inferior genetically. Scott is a Hoppian. He has admitted that to us. He has said that numerous times in voice chats with us. Understand that his his well thought out is built on a foundation of ethno-nationalism and fascism. So remember that. He also teaches his community to intentionally argue in bad faith. Yes. That is, that is, yes. He, he, he has admitted this on a voice call with multiple people as witnesses. He intentionally argues in bad faith and he, he intentionally teaches his community to argue in bad faith. Just, just know this. I, I want to f- have the further conversation with you, Vention. It's it's late. It's fucking night show. It's night shows all this week. Um, you seem like a receptive dude. You seem like you you know you can have a conversation without like spazzing. So like I'm, I want to have this dialogue. You're one of the few. No, normally I just fucking kick you out of here and call it a day. I don't deal with ancaps. I don't deal with ANCAPs. I consider it a bad faith attempt to uh, further marginalize and ca- uh, and uh, provide inorganic political cover for a bad faith position. I, I really do. Um, it's the same re- the same way in North America how libertarians became some bullshit that has nothing to do with libertarianism. It's a whole fucking history attached to it. But I I, I do. I, I want to fr- have this conversation with you further. They're built on racist ideologies, though. See, this is the thing. You're defending an ethno-nationalist. His marketized law and covenant uh, communities aren't necessarily bad ways to construct a community separate of any racist ideologies. They're constructed for the purposes of racist ideologies. To facilitate racist ideologies. Why is it that um, right libertarianism and ANCAPs always have a problem with racism and always have a problem with age of consent? Just saying. Seems to be a pattern. Might want to, you know, investigate that a little further. Either way, are any of our people streaming? Public is. Cool. Oh, I, I'm not even going to get into the specifics of like marketizing public servants. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. Like we're not, dude, I'm not, I'm not going to have, I'm not going to get into the fucking specifics, specifics of how privatizing all of your public services is the worst idea you could possibly have in the U S healthcare system is fundamentally a demonstration of this and how we could end up in some fucking a Roman, a fallen Roman Republic shit where you have privatized, uh, fucking fire departments. It's out. It's all nonsense. Like, I'm sorry, that's, it's just nonsense. That's why I just glossed over it. Like, I see you guys fucking glomming on to like this sort of, like, homie, homie, 12 hours, 52 videos, disputing all of this bullshit. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. It's all status structure. It's all de facto airsat status structure. It's all, uh, it all violates every tenet of anarchism. It's in complete conflict with anarchism down historical, contemporary, philosophical, political science. It's not anarchism. Call it something else. Do what you got to do. But it's not anarchism. You're not an anarchist. Like that's my issue. And that's where I get super aggressive 
is that like you got fucking people running around calling themselves capitalists and anarchists. You can't be a capitalist and an anarchist. It's not possible. It's literally not possible. So like capitalism is a hierarchical authoritarian, oppressive, coercive structure, which creates tribalistic in-group, out-group modalities of operation. Anarchism is a heterarchical, uh, inclusive, homo uh, 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 fucking homo uh, homogenous system in which it is distributed topology that does not do in-group, out-group architectures. Like, like, it's literally antithetical to one another. The fundamental core tenets of anarchism are to break down the core elements of capitalist modalities of operation. You can't have an anarchist capitalist. It's just not a possible thing. Uh, and like I said, I spent 12 fucking hours just going through this. So it is what it is, my man. Um, all right. So public, 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 public. Um, yeah, I can load into public. And I'm a mod over there, so I can make sure that the riffraff does not come with me. Hey, Karina, we're just raiding over to public. I, I haven't, Aspen, I haven't been on the fucking air for a while, and so I'm going to raid over to public. Public is my default. Libra's fine. Libra will survive another day. Um, also, I want to be able to... <clears throat> Aspen, I'm looking forward to separating some of the wheat from the chaff. Um, <laughs> uh, so anyway. I mean, dude, it's there's it, we're not gonna be changing our our fucking minds, right? You're a neo feudalist. Uh hey, terroirist, red wine terroirist. Uh thank you. You're welcome. Um yeah, we're going to read over to public. Public's good people. They, them. Um, they're playing Cat Cafe Manager, I think, which should be hilarious. Um, either way. Um, yeah, this is sort of a thing we don't budge on. Um, but another night show tomorrow, and then Friday we will be doing the normal evening stream uh, leading into bad movie night. So catch you all later. I think it's fucking counting down or something. Either way.